out to put your name behind. What are we building? A different kind of workwear, inspired by the values of those who put in the work. They're the reason we make boots that feel as good at 6 p.m. as they did at 6 a.m. They're the best you've ever worked in, or we'll take them back. Brunt, the tools you wear. Try us on the job for 30 days risk-free. The Michael K. Show on Yes is brought to you by Untuck It. Shirts designed to be worn untucked. Shop now at untuckit.com. Was, uh, it was an interesting day yesterday, and uh, unfortunately, well, there, there's good news and bad news. First of all, welcome to the Michael K. Show. I'm Peter Rosenberg. Don LaGreca is with me, of course. The good, the, the good news is Don and I are here for four smoking, piping hot hours. Oh, you kidding? And there's nothing like a, a summer Thursday before football gets going when your baseball teams are just absolutely dog manure is my dog manure a thing i don't think so don't but the why. bad uh, yeah it should be thing. yeah i don't see why i don't see why horses have uh, all the rights to manure and no one else <laughs> but uh the bad news is michael not with us today because no. obviously we'd love to follow up this conversation but he's on his uh summer his summer days off and no, michael, i certainly know he wasn't going to change that to deal with the onslaught today because because don we are living in bizarro world in 2023, and let's all remember this day. It was Wednesday, August 16th, into Thursday, August 17th, when the Yankee fan base actually embraced Peter Rosenberg. Don, let's never forget this moment. May never happen again. That see, that was what was lost, I think, on a lot of people. Is do you, you do realize who you're siding with here? There are a lot of people, Peter, that had to hold their nose siding with you. Oh yeah, because they're I, not I fans of you or your oh, they opinion told me. or your politics or no. the way you look or the fact that you eat on the air. Bro. but the point was just so on for them that that's all that it took, and I applaud you. I'm not crazy about Rosenberg. Yeah, it, it, it was. I, I got a lot of those uh, hold their, hold your nose compliments. Uh, I'll take them. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, listen. You don't have to say it. Like if I'm being honest, if you're going to compliment someone, you don't have to say, "Hey, I normally hate you," but you don't have to. You could just say, "Hey, I agree with you," but I'll take it. Um, no, but the truth is, I when I did it, when we had the moment, you know, we don't hold anything back. Mm -hmm. You guys know I don't care. The audience out here knows I don't care about the Yankees one way or the other. Um, you know why I'm excited about baseball right now? Because what the Orioles are doing, I, I don't give a damn. But what I, what I, what I didn't want to do was another show where we end up explaining the Yankees instead of saying what needs to be said mm -hmm. and asking the questions that need to be asked. Because that's where the fan base is, and I hear from them every day, and uh, my friends and, and, and loved ones are Yankees. Fans and I've just heard it over and over again, and I, I don't think. Listen, Don, I'll let you go into it. Michael's in a very tough spot, and I think I think the listeners really take it for granted and don't have any. And I understand why. Who relates to being the announcer of the New York Yankees? I get it. I don't even relate to it. Mm -hmm. But because I'm because I'm close with them, I'm able to see why these positions are really hard. Because I think Don and I would both tell you. We know for a fact Michael is not happy with the state of things right now. But I think sometimes the fans have an unfair expectation. Either that, Don, or Michael does it to himself because he just well, naturally ends up in this explanation role. But, and, and that's not what people want. Uh, there might have been a time where fans wanted to get educated. They're educated. They know. They just want opinions. So don't explain to me what the Yankees are doing. I tried to say this to him yesterday. Don't explain the Yankee view. 
We want to know what you think. And if you if you think everything's fine and dandy, then then own that. If you if you think that people should be fired, own that. But you know the the in between stuff, and it's tough. Listen, I I can empathize, Peter. Imagine if we talked as much Rangers as we do Yankees, and if the Rangers were going through stuff, I'd be in an impossible spot. Um, especially with MSG and with Jim Dolan, I'm sure he wouldn't like his team to be ripped, and and I might end up losing my job if I w- went scorched earth. But so I I get it. But at the end of the day, I can't care about Michael's situation with Yes and with the Yankees. We've got a show to do. And we've got fans that have opinions, and I have opinions, and we're going to express them. And honestly, I'm, I feel weird talking about Michael when Michael's not here, but we got a show to do. And I believe that him calling you a fan, he, he sounded more like a fan. Uh, you were just giving your opinion. And, 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 it's a, and, it, and here's where the opinion comes from, Peter. It comes from Aaron Judge after they were swept by the at 62 home runs. They won 99 games. They won a division. They played in the Final Four. They considered it a failure. Every time we have Brian Cashman on, he talks about no championship. It's a failure. It comes from them. So, yeah, relatively speaking, this is a blip on the radar screen of negativity, depending on what fan base you, 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 you are. But to the Yankees, it's an embarrassment. And calling it anything other than that, I think you're doing you're not you're doing a disservice. Yeah, I'm with you. We're going to open the phone lines, of course. One eight hundred nine one nine three seven seven six. Dot. It didn't get any better yesterday. It's not going to get well, better. I, 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 is, if there's a Yankee fan out there with hope, still, I, I want to find them. They are just doing everything. I mean, it was almost on. Do you, I don't. Need, we didn't even give enough credit to how on cue the Yankees were based on the conversation we had. I mean, this week, Don, every day we talked about what a disaster they were. They then followed it up with a performance to go, yep, that's right. Well, I I don't know what you're talking about, Peter. They had four times as many hits as they had the day before. Oh, because they had four hits. (laughs) So uh, you you want to improve. Are you four times better today than you were yesterday? I doubt it. But you also weren't as bad as the Yankees were the day before. So four hits, shut out. And I brought up, and many people reminded me on Twitter, uh, how the Yankees responded to Aaron Judge kind of calling them out. And they still got shut out, and they still were anemic. To Michael's point, they're not good. So it's not about not caring. It's not about giving up. They're just not good. And that's not good <laughs> for, for a Yankee team with the second highest payroll to be this bad. They're all wearing the pinstripes, Peter. No matter how many injuries you have, these are all players that were selected to be a part of this Yankee organization. And right now, if the season started today, and this is what you were going to get for a whole 162 games, Peter, they, they might lose 100 games. It's a bad baseball team right now. And, 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 and for the foreseeable future, mind you. <laughs> like, Is it going to get any better? It's it's repug. It's very it's it's really, really bad. Now uh, you'll be happy to know, Don, that in the in the New York Post, when when the article appears, like you know, like when you go to the sports page and the article about me and Michael exists, you know what it says. I didn't pay attention. I should have. I'm sorry. I didn't read the art. I didn't read the article because we lived it. Right, you didn't need to read the recap. But I did see it, but I didn't pay attention to the headline. What was it? It says, uh, Michael K., Michael K., comma, ESPN co-host, get into fiery Yankee debate. Excuse that, me? That's embarrassing. I mean, I've been on in the market mornings and afternoon for 17 years. Now, and I did feel a little bit better, though, Don. Because later in the day, earlier today, there was another article about uh, Chris Russo. And the headline was, ESPN Voice Rips Lionel Richie. And the ESPN Voice was, was Chris Russo. So that made right. me feel a little better. And, and listen, I'm still beating you. You're among the dead. No. But... I, I don't doesn't make it right. It, it doesn't make it right. It, it doesn't. doesn't. It doesn't. No, it's just it's lazy. <laughs> Uh, listen, it, uh, it's, it's not it was, but it, And listen, it's all anybody was talking about today. I listened to the morning show they were talking about. And they and they, Dan Grasa seemed to really just get caught up in Michael's crap in a lake. And just like what it all means and, and how would how would you 
do that and what I, purpose does it serve like it's just Andrew so Gunling right. Andrew like, Gunling wrote me <laughs> and basically said to me today that if I was real I would show up on the air today wearing a shirt that says go crap in a lane. Yeah, I think that should be something we that's that's merch. That's a yeah. merch opportunity. I mean, who busts out a random go crap in a lake? It is a thing. It, it is a thing. It's um, well, not obviously the crap part. It's it's it, it's an S word. It's it's it rivals your mom wears combat boots. It comes from that era. It's something that my dad would say or my mom would say. It, it, yeah, it's it's it's, it's very <laughs> funny. Uh, yesterday, also last night, uh, oh, Anthony Pusick sent me the. Uh, the, the video. I was like, can someone send me the video so I can post it? Because everyone seems into it. And Anthony sent it to me. And the subject Anthony sent was local radio hack eviscerates Yankee announcer, which I thought was <laughs> well done as well. And with all that, ladies and gentlemen, we're right into game time. Brought to you by, by Tullamore Dew Irish Whiskey. And we're opening with this. And, of course, we'll take calls on it throughout the day. But just to be very clear about where Don and I are at right now. This is very much going to be a lot of football today as we get closer and closer to the football season. I did catch up yesterday, Don. I don't know where you're at. I did catch up on Hard Knocks. So I do want to give you some of my takeaways from episode two of Hard Knocks, which I recommend if you haven't gotten a chance to see it yet. RJ, I mean, Anthony, am I required to say anything else there about Hard Knocks? No, you're good. We're not playing anything. All right. You can watch, you can watch it on Max. I don't know. Yeah. I, don't want them, I don't want them to come after me. Um, but as we get into Saturday, uh, the Jets have the Bucks and the Giants back at it this weekend at we as well. Uh, who do the Giants have? The Giants have the Panthers tomorrow. So the we Bucks definitely were at the Giants facility practicing because they were obviously scrimmage with the Jets yesterday. And I guess the early understanding was that they would hang out and get to practice today at the Jets facility in preparation for their game against the Jets at MetLife on Saturday, which you could hear right here on 9870 ESPN New York with coverage beginning at 630, kickoff at 730. But something happened back in March and the, the field wasn't available. So the Giants said, hey, come over and practice on our facility. So the Bucks and the Giants practice together today, which I thought was cool. Everybody's getting along, Peter. The country doesn't get along, but the NFL teams all get along. Yeah, don't you love to see it? And me and Michael, of course, you know. Don't get along. Not at this moment. Uh, also, we've learned that uh, the Knicks will open the season against the Celtics at MSG on October 25th. Yay! I'll, I'll tell you what. I, you know, listen, move, remove my Celtics from this. I'm... I'm I'm excited for the next season. I, I think that is something to look forward to. I, I don't, I don't know. It, it's nice because you're not going to go into the next season with the sort of expectations you had on either baseball team mm. or that people have around the Jets right now. But I think Don, you get to look forward to a next season where they should be competitive and be a team that matters. Yeah. Now the question is for NBA fans: Do they care about the midseason tournament because th that old bracketing was or, or the divisions were set up as well? in this schedule yesterday um and my feeling about it is that it really is not going to matter because people are going to watch the games anyway like a nick fan's going to watch the game if it happens to be attached to a tournament championship all the better but you know nick nicks don't suffer for viewers they the people want to see the games so i would think if the if the mid-season tournament works there'll be some excitement around it if it doesn't work well then They'll still watch the games. It's just nobody will talk about the fact that they're playing for a championship. Like the other night, I was watching highlights. The Liberty play the Aces, and apparently the WNBA does this, and the Liberty won the tournament, and they held up a trophy. And, and so people will either care or don't care. They'll still care about the game. It's just a matter of whether they care that they're going to win some kind of midseason tournament. I can't imagine teams like the Nuggets and the Celtics and the Sixers and the Bucks care. They're competing for a better trophy. But... Does it move your needle at all? Does it do anything for you? Uh, not at this moment. But, I, again, I don't know how we'll feel when push comes to shove. Maybe we'll enjoy it. Like, listen, as we sort of figure out the time, it's not, a, it's not a big thing either way. It's just another reason to sort of enjoy the NBA a bit more. I mean, yes, it's also just a, a money grab. Let's be fully honest. Well, you know what it is, Peter? Let's say we're, we do our picks every week for football, right? And we make them every week, 545 on Fridays, we make our picks every week during the NFL season. Let's say just in the middle of things, we decided to have a side bet. 
That's all it is. But we're still going to do our picks. The picks are still going to be a part of the standings at the end of the year. But just all of a sudden in the middle of the year, we decide, you know, we're going to have a side bet. We're going to add some money to it. So you either care or don't care. You're still going to, we're still going to make the picks. So it's just a matter. It's not going to get in the way. It's just it's, it's an extra little thing that you can pay attention to or not pay attention to. You might watch a Celtic game, Peter, and they're presented with a trophy at the end of the game and go, oh, oh, I forgot they were playing for something else besides just trying to win the game. Or you might be at the edge of your seat engaged, jumping up and down that they won the trophy. It's not going to stop you from watching the game. No, that's what I'm saying. The There's no real downside. No, there is no downside. That is game time brought to you by Tullamore Dew Irish Whiskey during the big games this season. Enjoy Tullamore Dew, the original triple blended, triple distilled, and triple cast matured Irish whiskey. Remember when it's game time, it's Tully time. Please enjoy it responsibly. And we roll right into Diamond notes brought to you by london jewelers and we start with the phones and we start with pat on long island hey pat you guys doing how you doing well, i'm doing good i'm just a little aggravated everybody's putting this on uh the manager's shoulders it's cashman that should go he got us two pitchers a high court and they're always in the, they're always on the il since we got them they haven't done us a bit of good we don't even need them. We lost two good pitches to get them, and that's what pisses me off. I hear you. We hear you loud and clear, Pat. I uh, think a lot of people there in lock, lockstep with you. I, When we sit here and constantly discuss how bad they are and talk about how flawed the roster is, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to realize the person that constructed the roster is at fault, right? Two, two equals four. He put the roster together. I understand that there are injuries. Peter, have the Astros gone through injuries? The Red Sox have gone through a ton of injuries. And you go out and acquire players who have a history of injury. Should we be shocked they get hurt? I, I wouldn't be shocked by anything that happens at this do, point. Do, do, do we forget that when Aaron Judge got hurt, the Yankees were like, Anthony would probably remember, like 15 games above 500. They were still in third place in their division. So I, I think we all agree they wouldn't be under 500. But let's not make it out to be they're on their way to, to a 100-win season if everybody had stayed healthy. There, there, there were flaws in this team when everybody was healthy. Unfortunately, Montas and, and Rodon weren't healthy right away. But whose fault's that? Let's go back to the phones. Let's go to uh, Doc in Connecticut. Hey, hey, Doc. Good afternoon, gentlemen. What up? I have a weird scenario out there. What about Aaron Judge being player manager? You know? Uh, All right. Uh, thanks for the call. Different. Thank uh, you for the call. We appreciate it. I'm not even going to comment. Move on. What, what gives anybody the – see, now I'm going to get sucked into it. Yeah. That he has the ability to manage. <laughs> we don't even know if he's a good captain. He called out his team, and they went out and got four hit. Come on, let's get let's get with it. Come on, come on, let's go. I'm so. We're taking honest. calls today. We're having a good time. No, let's go. Step it up. That's on you. <laughs> come on, so let's good. come on. Let's okay. do it. Let's get going here. Let's go to uh, get a clue, JJ. Flip. JJ in North Carolina. Hey, JJ. Uh, I really have no idea how I can follow that call up. That yeah, how can you? Great, great. Don't, but um, don't breathe out of your mouth. Yeah. So I was uh, I've been I've been kind of behind on the podcast recently. I can't really really listen live that much. And I was listening uh, last week, I think, or maybe the week before, how Michael K was just uh, talking about Rick about something, and he just keeps I just get very uncomfortable. I don't know if you guys do. I think oh, you do. Yeah. When he just vandalizes and romanticizes, not just Rick, but like I love how when he talks about a player's like attributes and their skill set. He's like, you know, he's a great player. He's a he's good speed, and he's a good-looking guy. Like, well, I, I don't understand. It's just so. <laughs> it is a thing. I don't know why. I mean, I don't know what like, you're suggesting. Why, but why it does it look have to be? Uh, uh, listen. Uh, why, well, listen. What about you? You could apply it. You could apply it to when he talks about my wife. I mean, he just talks about looks yeah. a lot. Everything. Sam Cassell was a great player. He looked like a freaking alien, but <laughs> it was he, was a, he was not of the draft. I mean, George Marison, right? I mean, that's. Well, and by the way, just yeah. so you know, because <laughs> you make a great point, JJ. Just so you know, it does go the other way too. He will occasionally point out someone who's a great player, but ugly. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's so it's just so uncomfortable. It's just bizarre. He's anyway, a strange man. Um, 
about the about the Giants. I'm not a um, I'm not a Giants fan, but I was just I was just curious what you think, Don, and you, Peter. Um, they it's like you know they're going into the offseason. They made the playoffs. Everyone thinks they're going to take a step back, but they you know they kind of seem like they promote themselves as you know they're uh, made a lot of changes and you know kind of taking a next step forward. But uh, they signed Daniel Jones to this big contract, but. I don't know if you guys seen their depth chart. What, what it's a dirty little peeker here. Their wide receiver group is really not that great. I mean, it's just better than uh, last what, year, but that's not saying anything. Isaiah Hodgins is the number one receiver. Uh, Sterling Shepard is, you know, he's he's kind of a good two or three. And then you got you got you know Galladay, but he's not going to do anything really. And then the, hopefully the the, uh, the young well, Jalen Hyatt, uh, the, Robinson, and yeah, Wyatt. They drafted. They, they, I mean, Hyatt is somebody I think that can be special. Tight yeah, that's, end-wise that's is much time. better. Love you guys. Thanks, J.J. Thank you. The, listen, the hope is, Don, that J.J., the, I mean, that Hyatt beca- the Jalen Hyatt becomes the guy. Yeah, that's the, that, that's the hope. But you don't know until you actually go out and see it. But this is a team that went to the playoffs last year with a quarterback that threw 15 touchdown passes. I, I so, just did, I, I was just on the, the, the radio in D.C. with uh, B. Mitch and Finley, and they were asking me about the Giants, and I, I was telling them about you know some of the things Jordan told us yesterday. <clears throat> they were asking what I expect of Jones. And I'm like, well, guys, do you guys remember when the Commanders lost to the Giants last year? Who the, who Daniel Jones was throwing to? I mean, as much as I say he's unproven, Don, part of that is the fact that how could he prove himself? He he literally did not have a legitimate NFL receiver group. So I think that's part of the excitement about the season, Don, is what will he be like when he has a couple of people? And no one's suggesting he all of a sudden has one of the best wide receiver groups in football. Oh. He brought up Galladay. I don't know why he brought him up, but you know Slayton, Shepard come. Slayton's good. Shepard is Slayton's good when nice. Slayton's, Slayton's nice. Would you say that's fair? Slayton's yeah, he's nice. not. He's not. They don't have a, like a dominant number one. They're hoping the Hyatt can become that. You know, Hodgins came out of nowhere, but that doesn't mean he can't continue to progress and become a really good player. The big transaction they made was Waller. If he stays healthy, he could be a nice security blanket for Jones, and that is going to be their go-to guy. You're hoping you have Saquon healthy for 17 games. They are going to be a better offensive team than last year. But is it going to be the best offense in the league? No, it's not going to be that. But if I can win nine games with a quarterback that threw 15 touchdown passes, I think he's got enough here to go out there and throw 25 touchdown passes. The question is, Peter, how many picks will he have? How many times will he be sacked because they're going to throw the ball more? We had this conversation with Jordan yesterday. Yeah, he was very efficient, and he did a lot of great things last year, throwing the ball 15, 17 times a game. What are we going to get out of a guy now when he's throwing the ball 25, 30 times a game? And I think they've got the talent to be able to upgrade their passing game. But nobody's going to confuse this with you know Kansas City or Philadelphia. Or even the Jets. They don't have those kind of weapons, but that doesn't mean they can't be efficient. Somehow, that was Diamond Notes brought to you by London sure. Jewelers. The engagement experts visit London Jewelers today at any of their seven locations, including the newest location at the mall at Short Hills. And if you enjoyed that seamless transition between baseball and football, get used to it, baby, because that's where we're at today. Obviously, we're going to be taking calls from people trashing sure. the Yankees all day, and we expect that after yesterday, and we're happy to do it. I'm taking my rare W in this subject, but we will continue to stay on top of all things Jets and Giants as well. And for sure, and I know we're up against the clockwise but you know i don't need the tweets from people it's like oh it's not football season yet yes it is the baseball teams made it so if if these teams are competing for a championship and winning their divisions we'd leave football to the side for now but you know what the baseball teams are dictating how much football we talk about right now it is football season thanks to the mets and yankees both being under 500 and basically out of it so blame well, them. Well, and if you're a Mets fan, you absolutely don't have a kick coming because they at least firmly decided. They told you, talk about football. We're moving on. The Mets have yeah. moved on. The, the, the players themselves have moved on. Look and, away. And, Nothing to see here. And by the way, so far, it, it seems like the Yankees are doing the same thing. They appear to be telling everyone, you know what? Watch Hard Knocks. Get ready for football. We're, we're, we'll be back. Uh, speaking of which, the baseball season is heading down the back stretch, and these putrid teams don't make it easy to watch baseball. But FanDuel can help. It's America's number one sport. Social media. 
for being a little more social. Connecting with new friends. Game day. Just an Amtrak away. glasses brand that lets you change your glasses like you change your clothes. Simply snap on a top frame and you're ready to go. Now you can customize a look for every outfit, every occasion, and every day. With hundreds of designs to choose from, Pear makes it easy to match your style and build a collection you'll love. You can even snap on a sun top to instantly turn your pair into sunglasses. Start building your collection today at PearEyewear.com. It should go like day after day. I gotta go. Deliver your way and on your schedule with DoorDash. And earn more with new and more ways to dash. Now you can dash groceries, alcohol, and even pet supplies. New ways to dash means more ways to enjoy what you do. And more ways to get paid. Sign up now to make the most, most of every dash. DoorDash. Welcome to the Aura Sleep Lab. <coughs> you need a bit more deep sleep. Getting enough high quality sleep increases immunity. Why? Because sleep helps fend off sickness. A good night's sleep boosts your number of infection-fighting antibodies and cells. And with your Aura Ring, you can learn how to sleep deep and keep your immunity up. It's like having a sleep lab on your finger. Go to sleep with AuraRing.com. With ButcherBox, you never have to worry about what's for dinner. We deliver grass-fed beef, organic, free-range chicken, humanely raised pork, wild-caught seafood, and so much more. Get high-quality meat sourced from trusted partners with free shipping always. Join and get free salmon for three months. Butcher Box. The promise of America is freedom equality. But right now, those pillars of our democracy are fragile. Reproductive rights, voting rights, the right to make your own choices and have your voice heard. We must act now to restore and protect these freedoms for us and for the future. We are the American Civil Liberties Union, and we are fighting in every state every day to defend your rights and the rights of all people. We have got to be here. We've got to be strong to protect those rights. For over 100 years, the ACLU has fought for everyone to have a voice and equal justice. And we will never stop. Because we, the people, means all of us. To learn more about defending our democracy, go to myaclu.org today. For us, our expectations don't change. You know, I just believe in this team a lot. This is a team that has a lot of good players. This group gets to tell their own story. Your bathroom needs for breeze small spaces. The always-on odor-fighting air freshener you set and forget. No outlets used, no batteries needed, no effort required. So your bathroom stays continuously fresh for 45 days. That's the power for breeze small spaces. Drizzly makes it easy to shop a huge selection of beer, wine, and liquor from wherever I am. I just open the app, find what I want, and it's at my door in under 60 minutes. Drizzly. Ding-dong, Drizzly. 
swipe. Oh, I love. Totally. But keep swiping. This is so much fun. This makes it so easy. Yes, that was a good one. Let's go. Yes. Play your favorite slots today, and you can win the next big jackpot. Sign up now, and we'll match your first deposit up to a thousand dollars in casino bonus funds plus two hundred free spins. Only at GoldenNuggetCasino.com. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Why not? It's the K Show. It's Peter. It's Don. This portion of the K Show on 98.7 ESPN is driven by Genesis White Plains. Visit Genesis White Plains, newest member of the Peppy Auto Group, the name you've trusted since 1968. It was weird, Don, because I, like Michael, I, I have a really, I, I think maybe even worse than Michael, Naturally, it may be worse than Michael. I think Michael's just older than me, and I've been doing more work on this part of my life. But I certainly deal heavily with, like, feeling bad about when people say something negative towards me and wanting validation every which direction, even if it's not possible. All those things are a real struggle, I think, for a lot of people in this business. I actually think Don is sort of unusual in the sense that he doesn't operate that much in that way. But... Yesterday is a weird one because obviously it's nice to have all these people say that they agreed with me. But first of all, half of them are telling me they also hate me. Mm -hmm. And also, all of them are saying, almost all are saying things about Michael that, that aren't true. That like, while I appreciated that I did a good job representing their feeling, I still thought a lot of their feelings, like, is Michael annoying when he explains things about the Yankees? I, yes. I think he is. I think it's annoying and no one wants to hear an explanation. But the he's a shill, he he's a what he pushes their water, whatever it is. It's Carries really water, yeah. ca is carry, he doesn't push water, he carry water. It, it's not true. And and to whatever extent he's a quote homer, I mean guys, he's literally the television voice of the team. I would say, Don, my guess would be that of every team in all of the pro sports, I would say when it comes to a, a, a having a another separate platform or appearing on other platforms, Michael's probably in the top two or three percent of all broadcasters in terms of their comfort saying critical things about the team when not calling the game. Well, that's but that doesn't mean he can't eviscerate them the way fans will. He just can't. He won't. See, I'm and this is probably an easier conversation to have without Michael than with Michael. Because th these are all facts, and, and I don't want to put Michael in an awkward position or make him feel uncomfortable because we're, like, flattering him too much. He is literally the only person on this planet that has a talk show and does play-by-play -play for a team. I'm talking terrestrial radio. There are guys that do, like Bob Papa does a, a football show on Sirius, and there are probably basketball guys that do basketball shows. And we're talking about a guy that does a show in New York and also does play-by-play -play for the most popular team in New York. Nobody else does that. Not another person. I, I'd love to hear anybody have any examples. Why well, do I always forget, Anthony, the guy that was the play-by-play -play voice of the Sacramento Kings that lost his job a couple of years ago? He was like the only other one. And I'm sorry, Sacramento's not New York. The, the Kings are not the Knicks. Uh, the, the Yankees. Grant Napier, Grant, Grant yes. Napier, right. Um, a good guy, local guy, got a job in Sacramento, did an afternoon drive show in Sacramento, and did the Kings games. All right? So maybe he was in an awkward spot. But he was, he was let go. So he's literally the only person on earth that does it. How, how do you think Gary Cohen would sound doing a talk show if he had to be critical of the Mets? or Sam Rosen of the Rangers, or Mike Breen of the Knicks. We've had, we love Mike Breen as a guest. Does Mike Breen come on in the lowest of lows for Nick time and, and eviscerate the team when he comes on for a spot? He'll, he'll give you facts. He'll tell you how bad the team is, is currently, but it's always going to be more of an upbeat situation because that's what you got to do. It's your main gig. You think anybody's going to be able to get away with just ripping into the team? And then expect to still have a job? 
And yet, Michael still is critical enough. There are people like CeCe Sabathia that can't stand the sight of him because he was too critical when CeCe was playing. So explain that to me, Peter, how a guy that's a shill that carries the water for the Yankees, and meanwhile the players don't like Michael because they think they're too, he's too critical on the air about them. So how does that work? Now, you, you do play-by-play -play for the Rangers, and you're on the talk show. Right. How, how critical do you feel comfortable going when it comes to the Rangers? I try to be honest. Now, I'm, I'm, I get a huge break because we don't talk nearly as much Rangers as we do uh, Yankees. But, uh, yeah, it would be an awkward spot for me. Now, you try to be fair. And, honestly, I would honor the show because the show, to me, is it, that's my main gig. But for Michael, his main gig is the Yankees. Right. So, uh, so it puts even more pressure on him. I don't want to lose the Ranger gig, but if but if uh, there was a face-off, Marco, Marco, I'm doing a show. Daddy, He's on the air right now, Marco. Are you doing? This guys, this is a this is a. You know rare. what? I'm, he's he's begging for my computer. I'm going to be a bad dad and hand it to him because well, I think it, it's more important for the show. No, it. it <laughs> you're gonna have that to was deal a long with time him. ago. He you're can gonna, articulate a lot better now. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have. He'll have to deal with the repercussions of what just took place oh, in about Mommy's seven minutes. He's not gonna be happy. But the point is, is that at least appreciate the spot that he's in. And this goes for the Bob Racemans and the Phil Mushnicks of the world. Hey, how would it go, Phil, if you ev eviscerated the New York Post? How about you do an entire article? On the New York Post and oh, the wait. death of the newspaper industry. Oh, oh, how about this? You mean you mean Phil Mushnick, who's offended by every every mention of sex, violence, filth, etc. Right. He's discussed. Yet every headline I get fed to me from the New York Post is my triple G breasts are too big, uh, and yet people still want to look at them. And then you click it because that's the kind of guy I am. And sure. and it's all so you. Yet I don't notice Phil Mushnick writing. I can't believe my newspaper is so desperate for clicks huh. that we essentially put porn out there. So, but he will call out Michael K for being a shill. So ask yourself if let's say you work at a company. And that company maybe doesn't do things completely on the up and up or, or the way that you would like it to be done. Or there's been reports that, you know what, maybe there's some questionable activity. Go uh, you think you're going to keep your job if you, if you go on radio and, and rip your own company or stand outside the building holding signs, marching about? No, you'd lose your job. And if you can't afford to lose your job, you wouldn't do it. So it's a really, really tough spot. Now, if you want to go as far as to say... Does that mean Michael shouldn't do a show? I mean, that's your opinion. I think he's made it work for himself. Yankees aren't the only thing that we talk about, much to the chagrin of people watching on Yes. But I think he does a fabulous talk show, and he makes it work. It's an awkward situation to be in. It bothers me, and it bothers Peter sometimes, because this is our main gig, or at least my main gig. You know, so you got to honor the show. But I, I, I just wish that there would be people that would at least appreciate the situation that he's in. And at least cut him a little bit of slack. I'm not telling you to completely forgive him because you're entitled to your opinion. But do you really think it'd be a good idea for him to say fire Brian Cashman on the air? Greek, Greek sent me a headline right now. My wife has a terminal illness. She wants to have sex with her ex one last time. The New York Post. Yeah, so, 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 do you right think about Phil, that, Phil? I'll, right. I'll, I'll look forward to it. Right. And do you think Phil would keep his? And I, I can't kill Phil for not writing it because he probably wants to keep his job. So we're all we, everybody that watches and listens to the show, all believes that we all have an agenda. All of our opinions are agenda driven. Sometimes you're going to be put into a position where you've got to be a little bit careful where agenda might have something to do with it. But I think my, I, w I wish Michael would get more credit for being as critical as he is, because I'm telling you, I'm t and I know these people, that I don't, I don't really think any of them would come on the show and be as critical as the teams they work for as Michael is to the Yankees. And yet he gets eviscerated by the Yankee fans for being that way. So... At it's an a, absolute at least appreciate no win. It, that's all. It's a, just a, just appreciate. I'm not telling you. Get mad. It makes for good radio. It's all in good fun. And maybe there's better ways that he can handle it. That's up to him. I'm not here to critique the great Michael K. But at the end of the day, just at least appreciate the situation that he's in. And, well, it, and it goes for well, for the for the Andrew Marshans and the Bob Racemans and the Phil Mushnicks of the world as well. 
I wish they would appreciate that a little more. Let's go to Danny on Long Island. Hey, Hi, Danny. Danny. Uh, can you do a roll call with only two? I don't want to break the rules. I know Michael's not here today. As long as you congratulate me for getting married again. <laughs> I, I've done that three times already. But yeah, listen, no. uh, I just checked with Vegas. Uh, go Crap in a Lake has now been installed as the number one seed in Drop Madness. Uh, and I, was, I did a, I did a four mile walk today. Where at one point I was next to a lake, and I thought, how would I accomplish that? There's a lot. There's a lot involved. It's entirely impossible to do. I'm well, like, on. are you all in the lake, or do you, you straddle the lake? Like, how does it work? And also, uh, uh, Ryan Hurley <laughs> pointed out, isn't the original saying "Go bleep in a hat"? Yes, like I, th I, I that's believe easy. that's probably. I, I think it's "Go bleep in a hat." Anyways, what else you got there, Danny? And then secondly, uh, I've been listening since 1947. Mm -hmm. And if you listen back to the entire argument, at one point Don tried to chime in. And for the first time in recorded history, Don LaGreca could not get a word in edgewise. Yeah. He was shut out of the debate. You don't you see him? it. You don't see it that often. So no. uh, a lot of things happened yesterday that we, we thought we'd never see. It, 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 was, it was spectacular. More, more New York Post time for Peter. I mean, him and Britney Spears are neck and neck with Post headlines for the year. <laughs> so in weddings. Now, listen. In, in defense of Michael and everybody else in connection with the Yankees, whether it be their fans, if this show's been on the air since 2003, one, whatever, this is the first year that we don't have a Major League Baseball team going to the playoffs. This is uncharted territory for Michael wow. K. This is the first time, because the Yankees never made it to, since 2016. I believe the Mets went to the World Series that year. So, Michael, no, no, you no, want to yeah. do it? Fifth, yeah. The Mets went to the World Series in 15, the wild mm -hmm. card. The, the Connor Gillespie episode was 16. Okay, so, but they made the playoffs. So right, this is the yes. first time since the history of the K-Show that we don't have a playoff run going on. And the Yankee fans, the Yankees announces, the managers, this is completely, like, everything they do is backfiring. Nothing's working. They're all under stress. And, like, last year with Sal, I had to stand in front of that microphone every week. Boone's got to do it every day. And then seven, eight in a row, Michael K has to do this show every day. There's nothing else to say. They're not, they're not fighting to the end with a pennant race here. Where, you know, with three, they're losing every game and looking bad. So it's Groundhog's Day every day. The temperature's rising. I'm predicting at least one more blowout by Michael before they finally run up the white flag. Because it's, it's just it's uncharted territory. You know? And by the way, it's Thursday. We can start to rub some football all over ourselves. Last week... Kenny Pickett, seven for eight, first drive. Oh, delicious passes, beautiful touchdown. Get the stud off the field. I've had enough of baseball. Get me the kickoff. I, I, I'm with I, you. I said it when they drafted him, Peter. Do you remember? I said he'll be a quarterback if he gets drafted by the Steelers. Yeah. His small hands will come into play if he gets drafted by, like, Houston. But it, 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 he will, he'll be dropping dimes in Pittsburgh, believe me. Because they know how to deal with a quarterback. <sighs> there has been. I'm just. I'm, there's got to be seasons where both teams didn't make the playoffs. Because the Yankees didn't make the playoffs in um, in 08, Girardi's first year. Mets didn't make the playoffs in 08. So there's what? been years. It's it's so it's so frustrating. There are just some teams. They just it's every time. Let's go to uh, Greg in Allendale. Hey, Greg. Don Peter, how are you? Hello. Hey, buddy. Big, big fan. Uh, watch every day on the Yes Network, and uh, thanks for taking my call. Thanks, man. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm calling about today is obviously that little argument that you guys had yesterday. And, Peter, I definitely think you took the W, and I'm a fan of yours, so that's an honest compliment, not a backhanded compliment. Mm -hmm. But what I took issue was with was Michael's points, or one of Michael's points, I should say. So we had a couple valid ones, like Judge was injured, came back, wasn't the same player, I get that. LeMayu, I think he said something about uh, Deshera as well. But what I couldn't believe in how I knew he was over-explaining was Matt Carpenter. He said he got injured and was rushed back and didn't hit. I think he went one for ten for batting 100. Right. But how could that be an argument? We got Matt Carpenter off a of heat from the Cardinals. Right. I mean, he revitalized his career. But come on, True. Michael. I but, mean, Matt but, Carpenter. But yeah, but wait a minute. Because I kind of thought the same thing while I was laying out of that argument. By the way, I was making the same argument other times, too, but just I wasn't as poignant as Peter. Thank you. Is that the part of what the Yankees do and all teams do is they improve during the course of the season. So they went and got Carpenter. They went and got Benintendi. All right, maybe that wasn't the plan at the beginning of the year, but Carpenter was very good for them, and they did miss him. So you kind of have to give Cashman credit for getting Carpenter in here, and he really contributed to the 99-win season. So I don't think he was that wrong to bring up Carpenter. Carpenter was good. 
They went out and got, acquired Benintendi. That's part of what good general managers do is make deadline deals to improve the team. And Benintendi got hurt. So I don't think there's anything wrong with bringing those guys into the fold as, as, as excuse or injuries and why they got hurt. That's my thoughts, anyway. You're, you're terrific at what you do. Thank you, Greg. More of your calls next, 1-800-919-3776. Jets, Giants on the table as well. But, of course, right now talking some Yankees. Sure. It's Peter and Don. And, Don, will you talk to me about PC Richardson? Well, it's fine. social media for being a little more social connecting with new friends game day just an Amtrak away these jeans are a woman size 34 that was a wake-up call for me I'm 42 but my body felt like it was 90 years old Found paired me with a team of clinicians and found the right medication. I'm down 78 pounds because of Found, and I'm just getting started. And because of Found, I have more confidence in myself. I'm actually in photos with my family. I'm getting my steps in each day. Found has changed my life. Go to joinfound.com to see if the program's right for you. Hey. Hey. Rental? Yep. You? Yeah. You know your shoes untied. Oh! Don't let a boxy suit ruin your night. Red from the Black from ShopRite is now in your phone on Instacart. Get free delivery on your first order. You've heard our story before. In some ways, it's yours. It's the one about rolled up sleeves, measuring twice, cutting once, and building something you're proud to put your name behind. What are we building? A different kind of workwear, inspired by the values of those who put in the work. They're the reason we make boots that feel as good at 6 p.m. as they did at 6 a.m. They're the best you've ever worked in, or we'll take them back. Brunt, the tools you wear. Try us on the job for 30 days risk-free. doctor and get yourself checked out. Visit linkbylovetv.org to learn more. Get the facts, get checked, and get healthy. This summer, happiness is a new Chevy. You can go farther, tow more, and bring along everyone you love. Your road to happiness begins in a new Chevy. Get 1.9% financing on all 2023 Silverado 1500 Crew Cab LT Turbo Max pickups or current Chevy owners get $9,000 total value when you trade in an eligible vehicle. See your local Chevy dealer. Itch, itch, scratch, must not itch. Stop the itch sanity with Cortisone 10. For bug bites, poison ivy, and other itches, Cortisone 10 is number one doctor recommended. It works fast and lasts for hours. Cortisone 10. <sighs> I'm Greg. I'm 68 years old. I do motivational speaking in addition to the substitute teaching. I honestly feel that that's my calling to give back to younger people. I think most adults will start realizing that they don't recall things as quickly as they used to or they don't remember things as vividly uh, as they once did. I've been taking Prevagen for about three years now. People say to me periodically, man, you got a memory like an elephant. 
It's really, really helped me tremendously. Prevagen, at stores everywhere without a prescription. Drizzly makes it easy to shop a huge selection of beer, wine, and liquor from wherever I am. I just open the app, find what I want, and it's at my door in under 60 minutes. Drizzly. Ding dong, Drizzly. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. With America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Lease a Tucson for $239 a month or get 3.29% APR or $2,500 bonus cash. Hurry in. There are times in every season where the games matter more. I want to win. That's why I'm here. And there's a clear line of sight. We still got a job to do. We're taking it one day at a time. To fulfill your destiny. A lot of ball games left. We got a lot of work to do, so we got to pick it up. I wouldn't count us out. What is your healing power? Helping veterans with PTSD, traumatic brain injuries, depression, anxiety, or loneliness? Is your healing power a simple, heartfelt letter or being a volunteer? At HealVets.org, you can find out more about the healing power of pen pals, volunteers, and therapy kits. Help Heal Veterans, together with you, has been helping veterans heal. What is your healing power? Find out at HealVets.org. Visit linkedbylovetv.org to learn more about kidney disease, transplantation, and prevention. Get the facts, get checked, and get healthy. WWE is, is over like a rover. They love LA Knight. And that, that, those are his two catchphrases. Let me talk to you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Now, the, the controversy with some when it comes to LA Knight is that he feels derivative to some people. It seems like he's... The yeah thing reminds them a lot of Stone Cold's what? You remember the what thing? What? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Anthony. What? No, no, I'm sorry. You're saying? What? Yeah. What? So it, it'll, it'll be interesting when WrestleMania 40 comes around to see what spot uh, old L.A. Knight is in. And by the way, tickets for WrestleMania officially on sale to the public tomorrow at 10 a.m. And I, it's important that I tell the, the wrestling fans, because everyone comes up to me around here and asks about it. And this is such a convenient one, Don, because, you know, Mania now is two nights. And, you know, maybe you don't have the appetite to buy two tickets because it's expensive to go both nights. But with Philly being so close, you could just choose to go one day and come right back. Go to one night, come on back. Yeah. So don't even get a hotel. You could, you could go to both days and not stay in a hotel. You know, that's how easy Philly is as a, as a quick commute. Let's, uh, let's go back to the phone lines. Uh, I do want to be, be a correct, um, stand oh. corrected, if I may. Please so correct yourself. I was yourself. reminded on Twitter that Paul Allen, the play-by-play -play voice of the Minnesota Vikings, does a 9 to noon show on KFAN in Minneapolis. Oh, I'm glad that you did. That is an important one because Paul Allen's a big deal. And that's a, and that's a very, you know, Minnesota's not a huge market, but it's a huge sports market for sure. And, that, and that people claim I, we look alike. You and Paul Allen? That's right. What about you and Paul Ulden? <laughs> Don't even. Ulden. You're saying it wrong. It's Paul Ulden. And you said, but that's what I said. And then he punched the desk. And then he said what? He, he, he stormed away and embarrassed me. And that's why I'll never give him the time of day. Ever. And if you get... And if you get the chance, you'll punch him right in the kisser, won't you? No, 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 no. I, the, the violence, no. No, he wouldn't teach that. Th oh, well, speaking of which, what did you say to uh, Marco during the break after he interrupted the show last time? Oh, I, let Ma uh, I let Mommy handle it. Mommy you was not happy. You told her, though. You said, hey, just a heads up. Uh, this kid, he's doing some things. Yeah, so he doesn't. So I've got the computer back. And Marco is in. Well, we, I, I'm not a big timeout guy, but he's in timeout right now. Well, well it is, sometimes it's required. Uh, by the way, Smashing Pumpkins are coming to the PNC Bank Arts Center on Thursday the 24th, and then they're going to be at Northwell Health at Jones sure. Beach Theater. That's Jones Beach to you and me on Wednesday, August 30th. Keep it locked for your chance to score a pair of tickets, all brought to you by Live Nation. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Let's hit a couple of phone calls right here. Let's go to Joey and Montclair. What's up, Joey? Try again, Joey. Sorry. What do you got, Joey? Yeah, I'm, What's up? 
<laughs> Sorry about that. Thanks, guys. Um, with that, I would never say anything bad about any three of you. Um, first of all, the, I'm a big sports guy, but the Rangers are my team. So, Don, your voice is like embedded in my heart. Pete, I was never a Hot 97 guy, but ever since you joined here, I listen to the morning show every day. Hmm. And I've been listening to Michael since I was a kid. Um, so I'll be the first person to tell you I don't think Michael's a homer. I don't think he's a Yankee boy. Um, in fact, I think the way he voices opinion, it's a real testament to ty the type of journalist he is. That being said, he is the voice of the Yankees. He has to have a little bit of patience with them. Um, but yesterday, the problem was, he used one of his own quotes. He was putting lipstick on a pig. Um, the thing he, he was talking yeah. about, like, I, I really don't understand how anybody in the Yankees, when nobody else expected a turnaround from Donaldson, um, definitely did not expect LeMay to be the batting champ again. Maybe you expected some kind of improvement. Um, but we know we didn't have a left fielder. We let Benetton walk. So all the things he was saying yesterday about things that didn't go the Yankees' way, aren't these the same things that the other teams are preparing for, that there's a contingency plan? So, yeah, Pete, you definitely took the win yesterday. And I hate giving Michael a loss because he's the baseball guy, but he was wrong. And he was just putting, like I said, lipstick on a pick. Well, the thing I took exception to, and I mentioned this earlier, is the Yankees hold themselves to a different standard. Now now all of a sudden they're just like everybody else, right? So any other team would love the Yankees' success, but we're the Yankees, and you know their captain, after a 62-home run season, called last year a failure. Now you're having a real yeah. failure of a season, and it's like, well, anybody would kill. Well, no, no, you're, you're not supposed to be just anybody. You're supposed to be the Yankees, so which one is it? Are you just like every other team? And held to that standard, or are you held to a standard of greatness where you're going to be great every year? Uh, which one is it? Right. You know, yeah, I, I remember one time. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to pile on things here, but I, I remember suggesting to Michael. You know, what would it, what would it be like if if you had to call games meaningless games, like the team being out of it? It was just an awful year. And Michael's like, you think that's ever going to happen? Said it on the air. You know, so obviously there's an arrogance around this team. This is what drives everybody crazy, Peter. There's an arrogance around this team that they're better than everybody else. Well, I got news for you. They're just like everybody else. They're no different than anybody else. A lot of teams have money now. And there's been, in the last 20 years, where do they rank among the great baseball teams of all time with their World Series appearances and their championships? Where? Where? Maybe you're not special anymore. Well, that's the reality. That's, and, and, and it is part of the attitude is what makes it so hard. Because it's just the expectation's been set. And, and that's who why sets that expectation, Peter? They We're, do. Right. And, the fans and, and, are taking the cue from the team. And I made the joke the other day. You know, Michael keeps talking about how it can't be done here. You can't reset it's New York. Mm -hmm. And that's why I made the joke about, yeah, so we, we, we can't be terrible for three years. We need to be mediocre forever. Th that's just, it seems like they just refuse to try to start over again. It just needs a freshening up. You know, sometimes, sometimes, Don, restaurants get really big. And they start to, they start to you know, read their own press. And after a while, you go back and you notice that some of the basic things that made it great just aren't so good anymore. And, yeah, the menu's the same, but for some reason, it's not getting done the same way. And guess what? Now there are new restaurants that have come along and do what they did, and they do it better. And they do it smarter, and they do it more efficiently. And, and, and that just the, – the Yankees are the old steakhouse, Don, with the red napkins and the old – it's just not – they need to modernize. It doesn't mean you can't do it the way you used to. It doesn't mean that the, the greatness isn't there, but you got to adapt. And it just seems like they're unwilling to do so. And I just don't know what they're clinging to at this point because what's been happening – and this is the, sort of the, the crux of me and Michael's fight. You know, he's, he thinks that they are willing to hang on to the fact they've had some success. I'm questioning what that success is. I don't think getting getting absolutely waxed by your rival is enough to hang your hat on. Of like, look, we're close. I, I just don't. But Don, I'll tell you what is amazing: the all new Genesis White Plains. There you go. It's located. social media for being a little more social. 
Connecting with new friends. Game day. Just an Amtrak away. People said I was crazy to do this. I wanted something different, radical and fun. Born on the beach in San Diego, now a rock of pride worldwide. Welcome to your new favorite shades. This is not something you just watch. This is how you power your career, grow an epic garden, or make a quick dinner unforgettable. Oh, this is about to be fire. This is not sitting back or zoning out. This is your voice. This is your canvas. This is another way of playing. This is where you stop scrolling and start doing with thousands of lessons from the best to ever do it. This is not streaming. This is masterclass. Friends have been telling friends about Colonial Pen Guaranteed Acceptance Whole Life Insurance for more than 50 years, and with good reason. If you're between the age of 50 and 85, it's a sure thing. Your acceptance is guaranteed because full benefits are not paid in the first two years. And the price? Options start at $9.95 a month, less than 35 cents a day. With Colonial Pen, your rate is another sure thing. It will never increase. And you should know, this coverage can last a lifetime. Call today, 1-800-290-3100. Managing my credit card debt was overwhelming. I felt like I was in a race that I couldn't win. I fell back into a corner and it just wasn't a good place to be. My name is Carter and Upstart helped me get rid of that credit card debt with a personal loan. Checking my rate with Upstart was super quick, super easy. It took me a few minutes to get my pre-approval and to get my interest rate. I got my money the next day. I was like, <sighs> easy online borrowing, personal loans up to $50,000. Go to upstart.com. on the Yes app. Take a tour of the hottest gyms. I'm excited to have you here. I love to have fun while I work out. And the coolest places to chill around New York. First, I'm going to be freezing you at negative 200 degrees. This feels so good. Let's see what happens. Catch an all-new season of Well Life NYC, streaming now exclusively on the Yes app. What's up, everybody? Chef Marcus Samson here on Home Plate New York on the Yes app. From pinstripes to chef whites, Yankee stars take to the kitchen and explore some of their favorite New York cuisine. Plus, celebrities, athletes, and icons join Marcus at some of the hottest tables in town. Check out Home Plate New York, streaming now on the Yes app. What is your healing power? Helping veterans with PTSD, traumatic brain injuries, depression, anxiety, or loneliness? Is your healing power a simple, heartfelt letter or being a volunteer? At HealVets.org, you can find out more about the healing power of pen pals, volunteers, and therapy kits. Help Heal Veterans, together with you, has been helping veterans heal. What is your healing power? Find out at HealVets.org. We all smoked in those days. If that was you then, get your lungs screened now. Right, right. at so, Sports Illustrated. Yeah. I just don't know if I ever wronged him or whether he just doesn't, I, I don't know. I just thought that, you know, sports phone alum, that I'd get a, I'd get a follow. I don't need to write about me or anything. I just, I'm just, I'm paranoid to think that maybe did I, was I not nice to him or something? And if, it's, I, if that was the case, I apologize. It was 30 years ago. I, it's impossible. Don, I, I find it impossible to believe that you were ever rude to anyone. But I actually had the same thought. Both Deitch and Trina, I know, I think Trina's a wrestling guy too. Yes. And they write about broadcasting. 
And like, I, I don't think I'm the most interesting person in the world. Certainly, I'm, I, mean, I know for a fact that I'm not. But relative to uh, someone that like either covers or talks about broadcasting, I, I have to admit, I do think my career is probably one of the most unique in the world. Mm -hmm. So I always get surprised when no one shows any interest well, whatsoever. No, whatsoever. It, I'm just a yo-yo. I know the argument for people that write in the newspaper is that they, they don't write the, the, um, the headline. Is that the same for Internet? Well, I'm sure it depends. Because I got but, news for you, Jimmy Traina or anybody else, that, or the New York Post. You're doing yourself a disservice by not putting Peter in the headline. I, you will get more clicks if Peter's name is in the headline because he's a, he's a monster in the industry. And he's also despised. And people love, and also people love to, like, hate read and hate watch you, something you're so that Peter's right. involved in. So you're really doing yourself a disservice. We're trying to do you the favor. I, you know what? Him. It's so interesting. So, so real quick, if you write an article about this situation on Sports Illustrated or on the New York Post, and you just write K-Show K co-host, you have people who are interested in both hip-hop and wrestling who will blow past it. But if you just included my name in the headline, they'd click it either because they love me or hate me. You're, you're right, John. It's a, it's a bad job. Bad job. I called him John. I did call him Dot so, John just now. Yeah. No, but I, I, I didn't think that was out of ignorance. It's just a slippage. It was a slip. I, I meant to say Don. I didn't but, think his name was John. But, Jimmy, I'm reaching out to you to say that if I wronged you back at Sports Phone, How I'm could sorry. you? I don't know. But I, And if you're just ignoring me because you don't like, you think I'm a hack, then that's fine. I, I, that doesn't bother me. That's his right. But, like, but I had to train him, no pun intended. Yeah, uh, the, I, I might have had to discipline him in some way i don't know i don't remember ever doing that because when you're the supervisor maybe sometimes you've had the all right let's go going guys stop watching the game let's go to work i don't know i but i, 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 I don't believe it you know we, we there was a there was a tight-knit community with sports phone so jimmy reach out i think he's an interesting he's an interesting cat I don't know anything about him, honestly. I, I, I'm always confused by his name. His name reminds me of the word spatula, which as a kid, I was determined that the word was spatula, <laughs> except people were pronouncing it spatula. Because I find it so weird when English words end with an A. It doesn't seem right, you know what I mean? I never like thought his, about that. His name, sense. his name, I'm 90% sure his name is Jimmy Trainer. I'm 90% sure. But he's someone it's so someone it's some well it's, don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. <laughs> uh let's go back to the phones. One eight hundred nine one nine three seven seven six. Let's go to Dick in Manhattan, some early Dick. Yeah. Uh, Pete, I just uh, Don, hi. I just thought of a word that ends in an A. Uh, it's a medical term, fascia. I think that's tissue around the uh, fat tissue, fascia. F A S C I A. Fascia. Very, very uh, good you know, point, Don. Planter. I just thought of it quickly. Uh, Michael is very objective about the Yankees. He isn't biased at all. So, you know, don't take these people seriously. Uh, fellas, yesterday you talked about Ali, the most popular athlete. I don't think it's slam dunk. Pelé. You know, a lot of people knew Pelé. Yeah, it would not, close. not. Yeah, close, close though. You know, well, listen, we, we know, we know that you are a Pele guy. You were deeply affected no, by the Cosmos no, moment. No. You love Pele, and their careers are almost exact. Uh, nineteen sixty to nineteen seventy eight. So uh, it's close. no. Listen, Pele, Pele is right there. I, I mean, yeah, when you talk, when you right, talk man, about. When you talk about known as the absolute greatest in their sport for like a, a really long period of time, yeah. Pele's right there in the Ruth conversation. He is the face of the sport and has been little kids to this day know Pele. So it yeah. is, cool. it's, I, I don't mind it. Go ahead, Dick. Don, uh, but Don, your dad, when he heard about LT hitting a player, yes, a, a person yesterday, he was cringing. And the man who invented the word violence in football is a guy you know a lot. Now, I'm not putting him on LT's uh, guy, guy. He wasn't as good as LT, but he was violent with Sam Huff. And even above Sam Huff, I hate to say Dick Butkus. So I don't know. I think I'd put LT third as far as hitting ability be behind the Butkus and then Huff because uh, those guys were violent. Well, the question was, would you rather be yeah, hit correct. in the body by LT or punched in right. the face by Tyson? Sure. I think I'd rather sure. be hit by LT. No, no, of course. Uh, but don't, don't forget Huff, and uh, and then there was another Oh, listen, guy. it so killed my dad. This Huff in Washington? Oh. Uh, killed him. That was terrible. That was terrible. Uh, and then we also had Bednarik from Philadelphia who did, uh, did a job on uh, Gifford on 1960. Oh, my God. He now, almost killed him. Yep. 
Now, the 76 Yankees and the 2022 Yankees were so much alike. Now, the 76 Yankees were my favorite Yankee team of all time. Billy took that team from day one. They lost their first two games of the season. I'll never forget. And people were saying, where are you going to get the hitting? Roy White was our cleanup hitter. So, <laughs> But they ended up winning 100 games. Great team. They came out of nowhere. Their big disappointment was 75. Mm-hmm. So 70, but what happened, it ended in bitter, bitter sweet because they lost four straight to the Reds. This was after beating the Royals with Chambliss' as homer, but they didn't show up against the Reds, just as the 2022 team didn't show up against the Astros. Same thing, four straight, and we're not close yeah, but in the any difference, the, the difference, Richard, as you know, they went on to win the World Series in 77 no. and 78, and this team is going to follow it up by finishing under 500. Don, because they finished badly, Steinbrenner went out and got Reggie. This team in 2022 was stood pat. They didn't get anybody. That was the difference. Yeah. Hal should have learned from his father 46 years ago. You got to make changes when you get beat like that. And, fellas, one last thing, let me mm-hmm. tell you. Larry, uh, uh, Don, I'm bringing this up to you because you bring it up all the time. It's an addendum. You bring up how the sports world has changed. Now, in 1980, the uh, what was it, the Lakers or uh, Lakers final against the uh, Celtics, or was it Houston and the Celtics? I think Houston and the Celtics was on videotape TV. Correct? We right. couldn't watch Take it live. Line. Right. All right. 1978, 79. Okay. We had heard about this guy Larry Bird. Now he made noise in 77, 78. Magic first. We didn't know what he looked like. We and no less an authority than Nolan Richardson, who was the coach of Tulsa at the time, and he spoke at your award dinner. I don't know when. We didn't know that Larry, and he said the same thing. We didn't know Larry Bird was a white guy. Didn't know it until late in seven, uh, the January of 79, Indiana State. They were never on TV. Right. We had no idea who Larry Bird looked like until the NCAA tournament. There was no such thing as uh, a mid-major in those days. Indiana State. Who was Indiana State? When I heard Indiana State, I thought for a second maybe that was where Doug Collins went, but that was, he went to Illinois State. Indiana State, we had no idea. We right. had no idea of their team until they made it to the NCAA tournament. And if you go back and look up Nolan Richardson, he talked about it. He as a coach didn't know who Larry Bird was or what he looked like. Well, yeah, it was a different, different time. Yeah. That's yeah, Richard. what a different time it was. You didn't know. And in those days, if you weren't from a big school and all, you got no press at all back then. But you weren't from Kentucky or UCLA or Indiana, Duke. Nobody right. knew who that Heck you are. Fellas, always a pleasure. Thanks. Let's, play him. Let's play him out. Thank you, Richard. Guys, uh, from now on, if Richard surpasses the two minute mark, I need you to start playing him out like it's a speech at the Oscars. Oh, I need just play some. Can we come up with some good, like, soft, maybe look up, like, music that you would play at, at an award show to play someone off? Because it, it, it's amazing. Richard's amazing. Yesterday, he, 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 like a bat out of hell, he just hits us with a fantastic phone call. Mm. And we usually take Richard in the 630 spot, right? And he, re- you know, Don loved the call, and I thought it was fantastic, too. Really some of his best. Today, his obsession with Nolan Richards didn't care. I, 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 it's unfortunate what just occurred. I just don't think he plays in the 4 o'clock hour. I think he's a 6 o'clock call. Is that, is that the rule? Oh, do you want to make a rule? I don't want to make a rule. It's just that, you know, I, I don't think you'd be nearly as critical if that call was at like 635. You're right. Because in, in the 4 <laughs> o'clock, we're rolling through topics. People are getting in the topic of the day. And I just heard a good minute about when Nolan Richardson was right. coaching at, at Tulsa. And, fellas, one last thing. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I do love the band, though. And I, I, I really want to meet I know. He's a lovely man, isn't he? Let's uh, let's go back to some phone calls here. Let's go to um, let's go to Ross in Hartford. Hey, Ross. Don and Peter, always a pleasure. Thanks, guys. Um, if you'll allow me, real quick, I called a little while ago about a point, and I don't think I did a very good job. It was my first time, and I was a little nervous. So, if you'll allow me before I get to my point, I want to recorrect myself. Go ahead. Okay. The only way I can say it again. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um. Just really quick. So the best way I can do it is comparing my fandom to the New York Giants. I'm a big Giants fan, big Yankees fan. Now, when the Giants went off on the run, the 2022 Giants, 
It was one of the greatest moments I've ever had with my dad when they won that one playoff game, right? It was unbelievable. Nobody expected it. We were really elated. We were really happy. Nobody expected it. We thought, okay, they're a team in rebuild. But you look at a team like the New York Yankees, and when you have the uppers, the captain, the general manager saying, we're all in, we're all this, we're all that, we want to win a World Series, you're inherently going to look at the season differently. And that's why Yankees fans get upset. I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong. I'm just attempting to explain, kind of like the way Michael does, just explains things. That's the way it is. That's why Yankees fans get upset when things don't go their way. That's kind of how I've been brought up. I've been a fan for maybe 10 years now. I'm fairly young, and that's the way I look at it. It's two different ways. I look at two different teams because the expectation from the ownership is different. Well, every year the Yankees are like the expectations you have for the Jets this year. Like it's, it's championship or bust every single year. That's what, that's what I brought right. up to and Peter earlier in the show is that Michael all of a sudden now wants to talk about the Yankees like they're just any other team. And they should be very happy with the fact that they're still mathematically alive and they went to the Final Four last year. But I don't know many, too many teams, Peter, that would have went to the League Championship Series and at the end of it, even if they had gotten swept, would have said, this season's a failure. But the Yankees hold themselves to a different standard. But is it time for them to just stop it? It's been a long time since they won four championships in five years. Yes, they go to the playoffs every year, but Peter, one championship in 20, it'll be 24 years. They're not obviously going to the playoffs this year, never mind winning a championship. They beat the Mets in 2000. It's 2023. Next year's 24, and they've got one championship, the 09 championship. Doesn't that kind of make you into everybody else? You, want, you don't want me to go through the list again of all the teams that have been to more World Series in that span right. than the Yankees? Oh, my God. And, and that one year, we even made it to the championship. But, but you got blown out. Yeah, but you that, don't get to do that unless you, unless you want to change the mission statement. If you want to admit to me that we're just like everybody else, we're just a squirrel trying to get a nut, well, then you can sit there and applaud yourself for going to the fourth, uh, going to the, uh, the final four of Major League Baseball and getting swept by the Houston Astros. But that's not, this, that's not what they sell their fans. So now you're held to a different standard. If you want to be held to a different standard, then this is the criticism that's going to get thrown at you. So what do you want to be? You want to be everybody else? Or do you want to walk around like a deity, like you invented the game of baseball? Well, if this is what baseball looks like when you invent it, then Peter was right. They got it dead wrong. Let's go to Joey Clams in Brooklyn. I'm a fan. I probably won't understand whatever quote he uses here at the beginning, but let's see. Hey, Joey. The Rosado brothers, they're taking hostages. See? <laughs> What's going yeah. on? My Frank Fantangelo. You, know, you don't know Frankie Five Angels, Peter? I don't remember the Rosado nah, brothers. Nah, you got on. listen. <laughs> come on. You don't remember the Rosado brothers? Come on. Come on. It, the Rosado yeah, brothers? Wood, the you know who worked for the Rosado brothers? Wood. Who's that? Uncle Danny. That was Danny. Danny Aiello. Yeah, Danny, Danny Aiello, Aiello worked for the Rosado brothers. Right. He's the one that choked uh, them out. God, saying, you know, where, where'd they get that scene from? Do you know that one, the scene they got in the bar scene when they put the rope around his neck? You know where that's from, right? No, where's it from? That really happened in real life. To who? Uh, that was with uh, Larry Gallo and Carmine Persico. Was over at right, you're, you're really you're really deep with your with your mob history. But he was at Uncle Danny. I, said. I told you, I told you the Gallo brothers ain't up at my nanny's house. I told you last year, Joey Gallo, not the baseball player, the other one. <laughs> Michael Corleone <laughs> says hello. Yeah, yeah. So uh, listen, we Cashman ninety percent is going to be back as a general manager. That's I just right. Hope how. I hope Hal tells him, listen, the six-year plan that you had six years ago went down the toilet. You got to bring lefty power hitters back into the stadium. Average baby, guys that can hit for average, some speed. And you got to get, listen, and Michael, here's the thing that he always says about Aaron Boone. He's been he's been uh, five years straight. First manager ever go five years into the playoffs. Who cares? You ever see the guy managing the playoffs? He's horrible. He's a horrible manager in the playoffs. You got to get a whole new coaching staff. You got to bring back some old Yankees that are veteran players. You see what the Braves got in there? They got Ron Washington. They got Walt Weiss. They got all veteran players. Doesn't have to be ex Yankee players, but bring some back. Bring some ex Yankee play. Bring some uh, ex veteran players back there that know the game. And another thing is, all the guys on the team are mediocre, jack of all trades, master of none. 
three, four guys play third. Three, four guys play left field. We got two guys playing second. Four guys playing first. Three right fielders. Three center fielders. There's no continuity. That's not that's not a good formula. Last year in the playoffs, five different times in nine games, you had five different shortstops. Five well, lineups with a shortstop. Well, I, I think I, I think that's kind and of unfair. Excuses. One more thing, because you two, Don, you make the excuses to, oh, they don't do it no more, Joe. You can't talk like that to them. Stop with the excuses. Get the results. No, but, the, but, um, no, but Joey, when we say that, that, Joey, that's the way they do it. Baseball. They just, well, that's unfortunately the way they do it. They're not going to um, change it, but, but you excuse. talk about... But, Davey, the, the team that gets talked about is one of the great teams of all time, the 86 Mets. They had a platoon at second. They had a platoon at third. They had a platoon in center, a platoon in left field. They had different lineups. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. The problem is that their players aren't good enough. They're just not. And, and Brian Cashman's the one that thought that this, Thanks, was a good, this, this team was good enough, and they weren't. So, you know, we can get into the analytics, and they dive into too much. But you know what? We're beyond that now, Peter. The team's not good. All right, we used to be talking about a team that was close and couldn't get over the hump. Now we're talking about a team that might not be able to finish with a winning record. Do you ever see the viral video? You just reminded me of it. Do you ever see the viral video of the racist lady who comes in to a hotel to try to get a room? And she and she gets like really racist. I think she may even say the N word. Like it's really bad, and then tries to apologize because she desperately wants the room. And the and the manager at the desk goes, "I'm sorry, it's above me now." And they're like, "She's like, no, but I need the room. I, we need it. We need it." Once she realizes like the hatred and attack doesn't work, she goes into begging mode. Right. But the guy behind the desk goes, "Ah, it's above me now." There's nothing. I, it's above me now. That it's it's above them now. It this is this problem now is it's deeper than a surface thing. This is this is now not just what the players are doing year to year. We can be mad about the attitude. Like I, I honestly, that really bothers me. I don't think this team wants it. Um, I, I'm frustrated by the fact, frankly, and again, obviously, I'm a Judge fan. I think you'd be, I think, I think any any Yankee fan who's not a Judge fan is is crazy. Uh, I, he's he's awesome. You're thrilled to have him on your team for a long time, but can I be honest? A little, a little, little, a little too little, a little too late. With a couple of days ago, him coming out and saying what he said. First of all. You can interpret it how you want. Michael's interpretation, you know, and that that it was sort of an indictment of Boone. Maybe, maybe. I mean, it could be that, Don. I also think that could be us as sports media guys looking to interpret it. Maybe it wasn't that. Maybe he's just saying they haven't shown up and he's disappointed. But no matter what it was, Don, it's too late. Like this thing has been slipping. Now we're now we're under five hundred. We we were this this could have happened a week, two weeks, three weeks ago. What, what, Don, when was the last time they won a series? Huh. They, They've won Peter, one out of 13 series. Peter, they don't know how to deal with this. This is uncharted territory for all of them. Aaron Judge has done nothing but come on to the... He came, he came up in 16 when they were, they were done, but they were still at a winning record. Playoffs in 17, 103 wins in 2018, 100 wins in 2019. Playoffs in 2020, 21, 22. Now he's on a losing team. I don't know. How do you handle that? Uh, you know, honestly, how would Derek Jeter handle it? Derek Jeter never had to go through this. I mean, they, they're they're going to finish under 500 for the first time since 1992. This is, they're, they're, that's why I said they've got a glass jaw. This is where you find the resolve. It's easy to be on a team that wins. Now, what do you do? Oh, we're going to find out about the how fans. How are you going to respond? Too. You got, we're going to find. We hear from a lot of fans. I'm a diehard Yankee fan. We can't be diehard because they, 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 there's been no dying hard. Well, they're dying hard now. This is this is the year. This this looks like it's going to be the year. Well, you know, if you really want to have a conversation, Don, if any of those fans are going to be able to have that conversation, like I'm re- I'm a real one, and this, and they're in the last 20 years they become fans. They it, let's see if if they're in the toilet next year, right? You have this year where you're disappointed, then you have a toilet season. Then where are you? Because, Don, all of us normal fans, fans of normal teams, we've all been through multi-year runs of being completely meaningless. Mm -hmm. I mean, during Eli's career, if the Giants weren't in the the Super Bowl, they were basically garbage. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that, that's that's basically what the Giants were for that whole run, which is crazy because they got two Super Bowls out of it. You know, for me, with Washington, it's been it's been 20 years of basically being garbage. So we're going to learn. We're going to learn a lot about this uh, about this team and this fan base. Um, 
So much to do right here on 98.7 ESPN and Yes. Avron, scene one, take one. Rowing is boring and hard, but it's an efficient workout that uses 86% of muscles. This inspired me to combine my love of games, community, and competition to create something truly unique and even addictive. I want to make it easy for you to get a full body workout that's fun by using game psychology and design to drive motivation and results. My name is Andy, and I'm the founder of Avron. My mission, to change the way you think and feel about rowing. Meet Away's iconic suitcases, redesigned, with even more traveler-friendly features. In new colors, inspired by the world. More color, more luggage, more travel. Shop at awaytravel.com. Emily wanted to create something special for her husband. Something delightful. This called for Zazzle. And it was perfect. Oh, wow. Now she's sort of obsessed. Creating for her. Thank you so much. I love it. For this. <laughs> and, well, everything. Discover it, make it, share it, love it. Create it at Zazzle.com. from ShopRite is now in your phone on Instacart. Get free delivery on your first order. This will never get old. Seeing doesn't come easy for me. I need glasses and Pear Eyewear is my new favorite glasses brand. They have really cute, lightweight, comfortable frames. And the best part is you can change up your look. If you get a few toppers, the possibilities are endless. The combos that you can come up with. What? Pear has solved everything I don't like about being a glasses wearer, which is looking the same every day. It's no fun. Speak to Whites and Luxembourg at 800 Law 6789 to get unmatched answers. It's the biggest financial decision of your life. Call 800 Law 6789 or visit misowin.com. America, come along with our adventure seekers, the Sanchez family, and discover summer with the Ford F 150. See how available features like Pro Trailer Backup Assist make backing up as easy as turning a knob. Watch as Pro Power on board lights up the night. And Ford Blue Cruise makes driving even more fun. Now get an F-150 or F-150 Lightning with 3.9% financing for 60 months plus $1,500 bonus cash. View more offers at buyfordnow.com. Ma, are you sure you don't want to go bowling with us tonight? Yeah, no. There's my little marzipan. <laughs> oh, my daughter gives the best hugs. <laughs> We're just passing through on our way to the Jazz Jamboree. <laughs> and we wanted to thank America's number one motorcycle insurer for saving us money. <laughs> Mara, your parents are exactly like me. I know, right? <laughs> well, cherish your friends and loved ones. <laughs> Let's roll, daddy -o. Let's boogie woogie. When I hit 80, I needed help around the home. A friend of mine told me to call Freedom Care, and they'll pay my granddaughter to take care of me. Funded by Medicaid, Freedom Care allows people to choose who provides their care, and the caregiver gets paid instantly after their shift. 
around. Life is sweeter with her around. Nana gave me so much joy as a child. Now it's my turn to return the love. Call now to find out benefits and pay and how fast you can get started. Within 15 seconds of logging onto social media, the algorithm has your daughter in its crosshairs. It sends her a steady flow of images telling her she isn't thin enough, pretty enough. They invade her brain, causing body dysmorphia, anxiety, depression, leading to the worst rates of eating disorders, self-harm, and suicide we have ever known. All while she's sitting right next to you on her phone. Congress knows, but it refuses to act. Don't let her suffer the secret pain alone. Use your voice. Demand a plan. Join us at the Center for Countering Digital Hate. ProtectingKidsOnline.org Because it's up to you to protect your children from social media nightmares. Join us for her, for your daughter. K Show 98.7 ESPN. Smashing Pumpkins are coming to PNC Bank Art Center Thursday, August 24th in Northwell Health at Jones Beach on Wednesday the 30th. Caller number 7 right now, 888 espn You get a pair of tickets to the show at Jones Beach, all from Live Nation. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. Full contest rules go to ESPNNewYork.com. Don, I mentioned to you earlier that I, uh, I watched the Hard Knocks vehicle last night. Yes. Uh, I got to tell you, man, he, he just continues to score 100%. Rodgers is just the man. Like, Seems it like is, a leader. It is really hard to watch that show and come away with any feeling other than, I like this dude, man. Like, the, you know, listen, is some of it, is he affected in any way by the cameras being on? Maybe. He's definitely a smart, savvy guy. But part of it just seems like that's the place in his life that he's in. Like, I mean, he knows what he is. He, he knows the stage he's at in his career. He, it seems like the way he, like, treats Zach Wilson, it seems like there's a real interest there in, in Zach improving. I don't know, man. Listen, I'm no Jets fan, but I'm not going to lie. Just watching this show really has me like, man, I hope this team does well this year. I, I really hope they actually deliver. You know, the observations are Rodgers is just he he's he's just perfect. He's pitch perfect in everything he's doing, everything that he's saying. Now, now the motivation is that he wants this to work. But he doesn't have to care about Zach Wilson. Right? I mean, what does he care? If Zach Wilson is going to be a star, it's going to be someplace else or after he's gone. But maybe he looks at it and says, maybe I wasn't that great to love, and, and I want to try to correct that now and pass it on. So I, I think he's doing that well. He's a leader. And that's what I get from it, Peter. Now, if you want to spin something kind of interesting is, is that, you know, where does Robert Sala fit in all of this? Because I think the leader of the team is Rodgers. And, you know, Sala is going to have to have a voice. He's the head coach of this team. If you go back to the Bucks, everybody wants to compare the Bucks when Brady got there because it's a fair comparison, right? Arians didn't take any BS. I mean, he got in Brady's face. Like, he was just he was a different character. And he was an offensive guy. So I don't know if there really has to be that much of a relationship between Sala and Rodgers because Sala's a defensive guy and, you know, Arians was an offensive guy and probably felt like he could get in Tom Brady's face because they shared, you know, the same interest as far as, you know, with the team's offense was concerned. But Sala needs to have a voice there too uh, and just can't pander to everything Rodgers wants to do. And, and you just wonder, is that going to be a problem at some point? But right now it doesn't look like it because... I think Salah understands his role and Rodgers understands his and everybody's in it to win it here. This isn't PR. This is actually trying to get this team to win. And so far, everything is working fantastic. This has been a terrific offseason. And outside of questions about the offensive line, which is serious, everything else has been you know, passed with flying colors, no? Yeah, I think so. I'm curious how Jets fans feel when they're watching the show. I mean, I have to imagine you're just... Happy, and you, you know who's got a ton of personality, and like, I, I kind of like bums me out. We don't get it when we have him on. I mean, we get a little bit, but I guess it's just there's a difference, Don, between being interviewed, especially by a sports talk show, and being mic'd up. 
Like, I recognize that. Like, when people sit down with us, especially the kind of, you know, being honest, the kind of show we do, you know, like, we're, we're kind of serious in our approach when we, when we do, like, our Jets camp. You would agree, right? Like, mm-hmm. there, we, yeah, there's some laughs in there. But when, when we start the interviews, Michael starts it under the guise of, like, this is a serious kind of conversation. So I get we're not going to get everything from them. But, man, I find Quinn and Williams to be so entertaining and fun-loving on that show. Not, not to say, by the way, he's totally cool when he's been with us, but he's just a little bit more reserved. But, uh, man, Q is really fun on, on Hard Knocks. No, he's God. terrific. And, and every, everybody, this is a really, honestly, this is a very, very likable team. Now, I know there are a lot of people that don't like the Jets because it's happened so fast and the attention they're getting. And Rodgers is clearly a polarizing guy. I can understand Bear fans or people that didn't like his you know, political views hating Aaron Rodgers if you're not a Jet fan. But so far that he's been here, he's, he's seemed very likable. Um, Quinnen, as you said, very likable. Garrett Wilson, Sauce. When we were out there, there wasn't anybody. We didn't have any of that. We did not, when we were at camp, have a, uh, a Thibodeau vibe at all from any of the players, right? Like, there was no nozzle in any of the players. Um, and that's rare. And yeah, I mean, so far, nobody's making any bold predictions. Nobody's doing anything stupid. Nobody's saying anything stupid. They're all minding their P's and Q's and yet having a ton of attention on them. That, that deserves a tremendous compliment. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess you could argue, you know, Sauce is, is, is pretty quiet on the air, doesn't have a whole lot to say, but, like, he's still a nice guy, you know? And then everyone else you talk to, Zach is fine, um, but, like, a bunch of them are really... St- Garrett Wilson, who you're going to hear every day with Barton Hahn, I mean, every week with Barton Hahn, Garrett Wilson's tremendous. What a kid. Yeah. Now, and matter of fact... Means- on, on, in matter of fact, his first appearance of his weekly will come next week on Monday at 4 o'clock with me, Barton Hahn, right there here. You go. So you'll have Garrett Wilson on the show, on our show, 4 o'clock next Monday before he starts joining Barton Hahn every Monday moving forward. Now, it all doesn't mean anything until we start playing. You know, this all meaning winning off seasons, impressing people during training camp. It's yo yo bum chuck. That's what you're saying. Well, it's good to have. I mean, you don't want to see any catastrophic injuries, and it, it's good to see that you know Daniel Jones is having a really good camp, and and the Jets are having a good camp and all that. But let's face it, we're going to judge all this thing when we get to January how it all ended up working out. And it's interesting because you have a completely different dynamic because the Giants have really flown under the radar. You know, they they they're they're not on hard knocks. They're not getting a ton of uh, of attention, but expectations are high with them too, but not quite as high as the Jets. So I, I, I'm probably thinking the Giants are very happy at the position that they're in. They they probably are enjoying not getting any attention because that's something I'm sure they'll use as fuel going into the year. That hey, they they accomplished something last year. So true. they won nine games, won a playoff game, and yet all anybody's talking about is the seven and ten Jets from last and, year. And how about this? Rogers. And how about this? I, I also think the Jets, in some ways, I, I know you may disagree, but like in some ways, the Jets have a lower bar to me. Like because yes, I know they should they should be a Super Bowl contender. If you're a realistic fan, you don't expect the Jets to win the Super Bowl. So to be honest, you would be thrilled if the Jets went. 10 and 7 and made a legit showing in the playoffs where they didn't win or lose well, they don't poop the bed they they play well that's a big improvement that's where they, for the giants though the giants made a playoff appearance last year they won a game and and don it seems like impossible for them to surpass what they did last year this year and yet if they do the same thing are people going to be jumping up and down celebrating well we talked it, about this with jordan yesterday i mean i you i need to see what it looks like but i'm kind of if i had to bet peter I'm betting they're improved with a worse record. And I might walk away from an 8-9 and nine season and say, boy, the, the, I, I think this team is moving in the right direction. Daniel Jones looked good, but, you know, really tough schedule. They're still trying to build some depth. They really can't afford any injuries. I need to see what it all looks like at the end of the day. But here's the difference. I think it's clearly in play that the Jets can win the division. Clearly in play. It's not in play for the Giants. Giants are not winning this division. you got Philadelphia to get over, and the Giants might have closed the gap on Dallas, but those are two legit teams you got to climb over. The Jets really have to climb over one, and no offense to Miami, but Miami's kind of in the same boat. 
you know, having to try to prove that Tua can stay healthy, but, you know, try to build off of what was a playoff season last year. But I still think the Jets are looked upon as, as the better team than Miami. At least that's the way Vegas looks at it. And they, I think, have a legit chance to win the division. So if I'm winning the division over the Buffalo Bills, why can't I dream about making a run? But if the Jets don't make win this division, Peter, are they going to win three road games to get to the Super Bowl? That's I know. Hard to, that's, it's hard to fathom. in that conference, that's, that's why hard I think, to I think, do. That's why I liked something Jordan said yesterday. Maybe the, maybe the standard should be not just uh, not about playoff wins. How do they do within the division? You have the cut? Oh, we yeah. sure do. Let, let's hear, I, I liked this. Let, let's hear this from Jordan yesterday. It's not just the Eagles. They've just gotten beaten up year over year by the Eagles and the Cowboys. They have to beat these teams sometimes. If they get swept by those two teams and win eight games, you could call it a failure. Like that, to me, would be a failure, even mm. with eight wins. Because that just shows you they really haven't gained ground on those two teams, which happen to be in their division. And by the way, those two teams roster-wise are really good. It's a tough spot the Giants are in right now, to be honest. Yeah. As, as open as the NFC is... You're just you're stuck in the division that's got two legit teams. It's tough. I mean, I, I know that the I guess you could say the North because you know Minnesota won the division last year and everybody's high on Detroit. But are they Dallas and Philadelphia? Or as you say, Detroit. Detroit. That's how they say it in Canada, and you know I'd love being Canadian. Out west, you've got Seattle and San Francisco. I mean, I, Seattle. I, I, are they Dallas and Philadelphia? The South, forget about it. Remember the Giants. Jordan said this yesterday. The Giants swept the AFC South. You know, we might be able to put an ESPN radio touch football team together that might win a couple of games against the AFC South. So the schedule's tougher. I think they're a better team, but, God, it, I, again, I'm bullish on the Giants. I love the direction they're going in, but sorry to disagree with Ty. I don't know if you could just blanketly say if they miss the playoffs is a disappointment. You know, win um, six games is a disappointment, sure. But if they go eight and nine, quarterback throws 30 touchdown passes, they they lose a, a lot of close games to really good football teams, uh, are you considering it a failure? Well, jo let me ask you this. Did you, did you already look yet at what Anthony sent us earlier from ESPN.com? I did not look. I did not have time. All right, so. I had, a the, major, yeah. con I had a major conversation with a huge ESPN executive today. Wow. I my attention away. What? Were, and you paid attention to this well, call. Well, you weren't here, even watching here's, hockey. Here's how Don LaGreca has grown. One time having a, 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 a dinner with an ESPN executive, and I'm watching Ilya Kovalchuk's first game as a devil. Had to. I didn't pause, shut off El Camino. Wow. To take this call. And you've been talking up El Camino. We that's, talked yeah. about it. That's the natural transition from Breaking Bad. I don't remember being obsessed, but I remember liking it. And thinking well, it I'm just really saying, good. I shut. Uh, there would have been a time where I wouldn't have taken a call because I was busy watching the movie. But now it's a new. Dump. You would have seen a Connecticut phone number pop so, up. You would have hung up. So, so to answer your question, no, I did not. All right. So, so the article is: uh, it's every team in the league, their ceiling and their floor for each team. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and let's go to the NFC East. They have the Dallas Cowboys ceiling at twelve and five, and their floor at seven and ten. The who? Dallas? Dallas ceiling twelve and five, floor seven and ten. Uh, I, really? Can you? Oh, see what are the Cowboys going seven and ten? Well, Ooh, as a floor? I mean, that's a low floor. It would mean that's, it would mean a disaster. I, I that's think. A disaster. I mean, listen, Peter. You and I would we'd hug it out if that happened. I, 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 I think happy cry. I think they'd probably, honestly, I bet with all of these, we think they'll probably fall right in the middle, which is probably what, you know, you're going for here. Um, it says the biggest X factor is the health of the offensive line for the Cowboys. Uh, the Eagles, they have the ceiling at 13 and four and the floor at eight and nine. Can, can you see Philadelphia going eight and nine? Well, again, it's the floor. I, I no, get it. This this would mean something bad happens. Well, what are we doing? Anything can happen. You know, the the, the God forbid the play can go down and they're going to lose all their games. I mean, you know, oh, uh, you know but no, but, but I, I'm not getting this now. You got to be feasible. It, 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 that's not feasible. 
You don't think there's any world in which the Eagles could big-time disappoint? Well, not a logical world. I mean, if you're going to tell me that there's catastrophic injury, Jalen Hurts gets uh, injured, can't play. Well, that could happen to any team. But when I, when I think of floor and ceiling, I'm saying that, that this is like logically, what's the worst that this team can be as presently constituted? Well, listen, anybody, my... anybody can have, you know, the, 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 have everything completely bottom out. But is it realistic to have something like that happen? Well, listen, they, they lost their two starting linebackers. They, Miles Sanders is being replaced by DeAndre Swift. It, it is a different team. Jalen Hurts now got his money. You know, is there a chance that Jalen Hurts is getting a little bit overrated and, and people are really all over him right now? Like, I seem to remember a time when no one was sure. And then, of course, you have a good year and you go on a run and now everybody's sure he's the absolute man. Is there a world in which he comes back to earth? I, it's not likely, but again, that's the floor. Okay, well, that, uh, that's so I can imagine what they have with the Giants. You know what? I'll, I, I will tell you the commies ceiling and floor and the sure. Giants ceiling and floor before we get to the Jets on the other side side of this break right here what are your thoughts on that i love it and while we're doing that i'm going to tell you or Please. ask you a question peter i'll answer the question have you heard about the newly renovated caesars atlantic city mm, tell me caesars spent over 420 million dollars in renovations and wow it now has something for everyone from new rooms and suites to top entertainment started when he ordered his front work boots. He's going on about how they're comfortable as sneakers, but he never takes them off. With his buddies at night, I caught him in the shower and he just goes, what? They're waterproof. Run the tools you wear. Hey. Hey. Rental? Yep. You? Yeah. You know your shoes untied. Oh. Don't let a boxy suit ruin your night. Read from the blacktux.com. Custom Ink helps to celebrate and drive our students' achievements with custom gear. They love Custom Ink's different styles and designs. We love how Custom Ink makes the process simple with their easy-to-use design lab, expert artists ready to help, and unbeatable customer service. Custom Ink allows our kids to show everyone their accomplishments and the pride they have in our school. When we place an order, I know they got our back, so we can focus on the kids. Custom Ink has hundreds of products to help you feel connected. Upload your logo or start your design today at customink.com. All right, here we go. It's a big responsibility to be a designer. Dagny Dover is a bag brand based in New York City, founded by three women. We make hyper-functional, performance-driven bags. That's like a mouthful. We're all about getting the most out of life. When you're organized and you have your things together, you feel good. And when you feel good, you can live life intentionally. Oh, <laughs> it's pronounced D Dagny Dover. Dagny means new dawn. It's a new dawn for fashion. Having those high interest credit cards, it just felt, it felt unmanageable. My name is Belinda and with Upstart, I was able to save money with a personal loan. From the moment that I checked my rate to getting that approval was just a few minutes. I felt relieved having the funds in my account so quickly. I was able to turn all of those, you know, big payments into one small payment and I was able to breathe. Easy online borrowing. Personal loans up to $50,000. Go, go to upstart.com. Can a handyman fix my leaky faucet? How much does it cost to have my HVAC checked? How do I know I Is have a missing radiator? What do I have Home questions don't have to keep you up at night. Get peace of mind with Thumbtack. We'll connect you with local pros for any home project, from a small fix to a big remodel. See transparent prices, read verified reviews, and book with just a tap. Thumbtack, the easy way to care for your home. Rowing is boring and hard, but it's a great full-body workout that utilizes 86% of muscles. 
That's what inspired me to combine my love of games, community, and competition to create Avrum, a connected fitness experience that is truly unique and even addictive. Avron is a rower for non-rowers and uses game psychology and design to drive motivation and results. My mission is to change the way you think and feel about rowing. So much fun. This makes it so easy. Yes, that was a good one. Let's go. Play your favorite slots today and you can win the next big jackpot. Sign up now and we'll match your first deposit up to $1,000 in casino bonus funds plus 200 free spins. Only at GoldenNuggetCasino.com. The new 2023 GMC Sierra AT4X is equipped to conquer the great outdoors. Or the great indoors. Welcome to the peak of premium off-roading or get 0.9% APR plus over 3,200 total trade assistance and no monthly payments for 90 days on 2023 Sierra Denali 5.3 liter V8 light duty models. When you support City Harvest, you feed hope, love, and joy. You feed confidence, community, and comfort. You feed health, strength, and spirit. When you support City Harvest, you do more than just provide hundreds of millions of pounds of food to millions of hungry New Yorkers. When you support City Harvest, you feed good. You gotta see it to believe it. Can't get it's The promise of America is freedom, equality. But right now, those pillars of our democracy are fragile. Reproductive rights, voting rights, the right to make your own choices and have your voice heard. We must act now to restore and protect these freedoms for us and for the future. We are the American Civil Liberties Union, and we are fighting in every state, every day, to defend your rights and the rights of all people. We have got to be here. We've got to be strong to protect those rights. For over 100 years, the ACLU has fought for everyone to have a voice and equal justice, and we will never stop. Because we, the people, means all of us. To learn more about defending our democracy, Go to myaclu.org today. Show 98.7 ESPN. Peter and Don here. Hello. Getting a little gray and potentially rainy out there. Any big uh, weekend plans, Don? We can sniff the weekend now. Thursday, 5 o'clock, you start... <laughs> start smelling. No, it's going to be gorgeous this weekend. So a lot of pool time. Just relax. I I'm going on vacation. I'm not going to go anywhere. It's going to be a staycation. I like staycations. And so we're just going to relax, chill them out. I see. I don't. I don't like. I don't think I like a straight up staycation. Well, we're going to do little side trips here and there with the kids, different things that we wouldn't be able to do because of the work and me getting home so late. All right, good. But you know, no no hotel. We're going to be home, and but little things here and there. And I'll be listening. Don't worry. By the way, I've been trying to encourage uh, Natalie to. Post more of her pictures as, uh, as like uh, purchasable prints on her website because some of her pictures that she has from Iceland are so crazy. And like, if you go to her website, MissHatton.com, she does have like maybe five different things in her shop, like New York prints that you can get. Mm. But I don't know, man. I, I I'm a little biased towards my wife's work. Oh, no, she has more. She has more than that, actually. She has a she has a bunch, actually. 
Did she go to? But the they're almost Imagine all New Tower? York. The where? The Imagine Tower. The John Lennon. It's in Is Iceland. It in, I don't okay. think so. I don't think she did. She told me she got to do. I mean, she was only there for a couple of days, and I didn't realize that Iceland has shown so much. She was like, "Oh, I only got to do a little bit of the stuff that's there." Interesting. I don't think yeah. she hit the, the Imagine Tower. No, no, I see the Imagine Tower. No, it's very nice from what I can see. Good and for you, her. Check that. Uh, yeah. And do they have? And do they have a McCartney Tower? No. You know why? Because John Lennon's the man. You know what I mean? A little happy birthday is in order today. Oh, go ahead. To the great Robert De Niro. 80 years old. Bob's 80? Yes. I got to tell you, I watched a really underrated uh, De Niro movie over the weekend. Hmm, underrated De Niro movie. Yeah, you're not going to think of this. It's within the last 10 years. Oh, okay. Any thoughts? Now, is he in it, or it's an actual De Niro movie? What? You, no, no, I mean, he's the, he's the star of oh, okay. the movie. Hmm. Last started. 10 years. It's within the last 10 years. I'm looking right now. On, on IMDb, it's got a 5.9. Was it the Grandpa one? That's right. Oh. Have you seen it? I have not seen it. Don, pr I promise you, not to say it won't have, um, you know, lapses, of course. Like, it, it's, a, it's a silly comedy. So, like, towards the end, you know when they start to wrap up the silly comedy? You'll always get sort of, like, 15 minutes of, like, not that great. Um, but by and large, over the course of the 90 minutes, hilarious. And some, the first 30 minutes are just like you're doubled over laughing the whole time. Really? I promise you. Promise. Now, this, like, now I'm giving it hype. I saw it with no hype. And I just saw it over the weekend. It was laughing really hard. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, he's, he's out there in this movie. Very what's, enjoyable. What's his quintessential role? Uh... Uh, it's hard, man. I mean, it really is for me. It's gonna. It, well, I think. I think if, if, when God forbid, not God forbid, he's going to pass one day. When the time comes, when we hopefully a long time from now say goodbye, and they do the the retrospective on the Oscars, I feel like the main things they're going to show are going to be Goodfellas and Raging Bull. True, but. I can't say he's. That's what he's known for. Well, and he's he's beyond being known for. Right. That's what I'm thing. saying. Is is that you know, Raging Bull? I think it's one of the greatest sports movies of all time. It's, it's fantastic, and he does a tremendous job playing Jake LaMotta. And then you say like Goodfellas. I mean, that's one of the greatest movies of all time. But you can't ignore what he did in Godfather Two. Yeah, but he's not that young. But he's not going to be. I mean, that's big, but that's that's not the starring role of the film. But it's the biggest movie he was ever in. The biggest movie he was ever in. Godfather Two, definitively bigger than Goodfellas. Yeah. I mean, I, I, and I'm a huge Goodfellas fan. But it's not the Godfather Two. Now, what are you basing big on? Are you talking about sheer box office numbers? I was just saying or cultural just, just impact. For the appreciation and the culture. I mean, because you kind of morph the two in, right? Godfather, Godfather 2. They're both Academy Award winners. It's, it's the greatest sequel of all time. But they kind of, you watch the epic and they mix it together. It's, it's all one movie to me. So it's too iconic to be really be, be touched by any other movie that he's been in. But then, you know, the Meet the Parents franchise, completely different roles. Uh, what about Taxi Driver? We left Taxi that Taxi Driver is probably, that might be the best job he ever did. The heavy lifting in that movie. That movie's, there's so many layers to that movie. It's, it's great. You know, it, 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 that movie, well, you know how you say, like, obviously the underlining theme of The Sopranos is, is The Godfather, right? Tony's basically Michael fighting through the mafia trying to and trying to be a good person and a family man at the same time taxi driver's got a lot of breaking bad to it never thought about it like that by you the know, way bronx bronx tra bronx tale where he plays a straight character yeah not actually a crook is he's pretty tremendous in no, that he's well. just he's he's up i mean when you talk about the mount rushmore of of male actors he's he's on there He's, he's, he's right? fantastic.
I mean, you're not going to argue with that, right? Uh, no, I, I, he'd certainly be in the conversation. What I will argue with is the fact that we did not pay off the tees. Well, we do need. Fault, huh? Mine. We're going to pick it up. <laughs> we're going to pick it up on the other side, though, and keep rolling with sure. football and talk about where your Giants and Jets are being predicted to land when it comes to ESPN, at least. Mm. But Don, until we get there, I want you to tell me about pain. Well, I want to tell you the summer is. It started when he ordered his brunt work boots. He's going on about how they're comfortable as sneakers, but he never takes them off. With his buddies at night, I caught him in the shower, and he just goes, what, they're waterproof? Brunt, the tools you wear. said I was crazy to do this. I wanted something different, radical, and fun. Born on the beach in San Diego, now rock with pride worldwide. Welcome to your new favorite shades. At Warby Parker, we believe in vision for all. Not just in the sense that we offer lots of frame styles and sizes, because we do. Or that we have glasses, sunglasses, contacts, and eye exams. There's also that, but because we believe everyone has the right to see. So for every pair sold, a pair of glasses is distributed to someone in need. Try five pairs for free or visit a near nearby store. Tired of trying countless diet and exercise programs that ultimately don't work? That's because success often isn't about willpower. It's about your biology. Prescription medication can help you overcome cravings, balance blood sugar, or help you feel fuller longer so you can finally tackle the barriers to weight loss and discover a happier, healthier you. Because it's not about what you've lost, but what you've found. Take the quiz at joinfound.com to see if Found's prescription weight weight loss program is right for you. Paying down debt can feel overwhelming but it doesn't have to be. Upstart makes it fast and easy. Borrowers can access the funds they need in as little as one business day. Checking your rate is fast, easy, with no cost to you or your credit score. Loans start at $1,000 and go up to $50,000. Join the club of over 1.8 million customers who have turned to Upstart for a personal loan. Your financial freedom begins at, at upstart.com. The path to business success is often unpredictable. Managing your bank account doesn't need to be. Find your flow with Powerfully Smooth Banking that keeps you focused on bringing your vision to life. Wherever your company goes, Mercury is there with banking products like checking and savings accounts, debit and credit cards, wire transfers and financing, all designed to scale with your company. One week to crunch? Yeah, totally fine. Just got to hunker down and focus. When you have to go into crunch mode, reach out for some help. It's not hard to get. You want to be the best at whatever you do? Get Alpha Brain. Focus where it matters most. I wanted to thank America's number one motorcycle insurer for saving us money. <laughs> Mara, your parents are exactly like me. I know, right? <laughs> well, cherish your friends and loved ones. Let's roll, daddy Let's boogie woogie. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. With America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Now's the time to get in and get away. Lease an all-wheel drive Ionic 6 for $383 a month, including a 7500 EV lease bonus, or get up to $5,000 bonus cash. Hurry in. The Yankees and the Red Sox, a renewal of the greatest rivalry in sports. Me yesterday. And uh, some other football and, and baseball calls as well. But, Don, we were going over the floor and ceilings, the floors and ceilings of mm -hmm. football teams, at least according to 
uh, ESPN.com. And we'd gone over your uh, Dallas Cowboys, who they have at the ceiling 12 and 5, the floor at 7 and 10, and the Eagles ceiling at 13 and 4, which I think is pretty realistic this year, unfortunately, and the floor at 8 and 9. The Washington Commanders, they have the ceiling at 10 and 7, and the floor at 5 and 12, hmm. which, which is about how I feel. Yeah. Um, they, the X factor they have, you would assume would be quarterback. It's not, it's the offensive line. Um, which is supposed to be questionable at best. Um, so that totally makes sense. Because, Don, the bottom line is, if you have a quarterback who's even half decent, if you give them protection and you have other units that can play and you have a good receiver core and running backs, et cetera, you should be at least half decent. Yeah. But You're, you're not going to get a quarterback like that to overachieve with a bad offensive line. Correct. And, and in fact, you're, and your great quarterbacks – can be completely hampered if the offensive line stinks. I'm sure that'll be an issue that's raised when we get to the the Jets of it all. Mm. Uh, now, let's go to the New York Giants. Okay. Any thoughts here on what the uh, they'll have the ceiling is? It's probably going to be. I would probably say that their ceiling is ten and seven, and okay. they're and they probably have their. Um, their floor at six and eleven. You got the floor right. Okay. But you short but you shortchanged their ceiling. Which they have at eleven and six. Oh, eleven and six would be would be something. Now you're saying, well Don, why would it be something? It's really Don, only why would it be something? It was really only improving by two and a half games. Two more wins and no tie. Um, after the 9-7-1 season last year. But, again, the schedule is so much harder this year. That's the thing. Because you, 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 you swapped out the AFC South for the AFC East. That's quite the swap. And then you've got the Eagles twice. You've got the Cowboys twice. And I thought Jordan nailed it. The Giants don't beat those teams on a bet. I mean, it, really, that's the problem is the Giants never seem to have a great divisional record. Because uh, they, 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 they lost, they, they always lose to Dallas, they always lose to Philadelphia, you know, and, and they're lucky to get maybe a, a couple of wins out of the division each year. So um, you're already in a very, very difficult division. I, I would say the best division in the NFC. Is that fair? Uh, yeah, I think you'd argue it's the best in the league. Sure. Now, they say the biggest question mark for this team mm -hmm. is the health of Darren Waller. That's a definite question. Here's what they say. Waller is this team's number one receiver and a mismatch nightmare whom Coach Dable and offensive coordinator Mike Kafka will use all over the field. It will be much def different and less explosive if Waller has trouble staying on the field like he has the past two seasons in which he's only played 20 of a possible 34 games. Mm. Waller has only 83 receptions for 1,053 yards and five touchdowns the past two seasons after hauling in 107 for 1196 and nine touchdowns in 2020. That's according to Jordan Ronan. Now, this is sort of my issue with Jordan, what he said yesterday about Waller and what everyone's saying about Waller. Like, there's just not enough history of Waller being healthy and good for me to, like, treat that like a foregone conclusion. Mm -hmm. Half his career he's been injured. Half his career he's been awesome. You know, and I guess I, I personally have experience with having an amazing tight end. One who, I, I'll tell you right now, talent-wise, I would have taken even over Waller in Jordan Reed, who could never stay on the field. And it ended up just being totally brutal. And the guy you think is going to be your number one player, you never get to use at all. And I feel really bad in football when that happens, Don, right? Because you can't begrudge guys who can't stay on the field. It's just, it's that kind of game, and some people's bodies just end up not being able to take it. But, like, the idea that this team is going to be improved 100% because of Darren Waller is a little tough for me to accept until we get into this season and see how he's, hey, how he's doing. Can't we say the same thing about Saquon? Well, he's missed like 22 games in his career. Is, is Saquon going to be able to stay healthy too? Yeah, I think uh, it's tough to completely bank on that. You can right. it, it, just because last year he gave you what you wanted. You don't know. No, you don't know. But you, and they don't have exceptional depth, especially as, well, as we saw after that um, the preseason game they played against the Lions. It didn't seem like they had really any depth at all. Jordan said it right. I mean, from a talent standpoint, Philadelphia, even with all the guys that they lost in, in free agency. And the Cowboys, they don't have the talent. 
But I will say this about football. You know, you get into hockey, you get into basketball, you get into baseball, you can start talking the talent game. There's a reason why the Steelers seem to be good every year. Right? You know, even going back to the coward days, they, they'd lose free agents, and, and they just continue to, to always finish above 500 and always be a threat. When you're a well-run organization and you're well-coached, you just you seem to figure it out. Now, that you, there's some injuries you can't overcome. You know, Jalen Hurts get, gets uh, banged up. Then you're, that's a different story. But, yeah, the Eagles look like a well-run organization, great general manager, great head coach. They can lose free agents and still be very good. Now, the Cowboys, I think there's a reason why they haven't been able to get over the hump. They've been some of the most talented players in the league. They, they, they always seem to send the most pro bowlers to the pro bowl. But they're not as well coached. McCarthy's not that great of a guy. I know he won a no. Super Bowl. I don't respect him the way I do a lot of other Super Bowl championship coaches. And so that's a reason why Dallas doesn't get over the hump. But when you look at it talent-wise, they seem to have as much talent as anybody in the league. You know, Kansas City, the same thing. I mean, can you rattle off all the weapons they have? Yeah, you can mention Kelsey, but outside of that, you know, then they lose Hill. They still seem to you know win a Super Bowl. Why? Because they've got the co- they got the coach and the quarterback. Give me the coach and the quarterback. So as long as Philadelphia's got the coach and the quarterback, I think they're going to be fine. Now, the, the Giants, I think, have the coach. The question is, do they have the quarterback? Let's let's flip this and look at the win loss in the AFC East. Okay. Quickly, you have a thought guess, on, I you have a thought on the Bills? I would say the Bills ceiling is probably around the Eagles ceiling of a, of a 13 and 4. Correct. And I, I guess I'll go the same route because they do seem to be trending down a little bit. So I will say their floor is 8 and 9 as well. You nailed it 100% yeah. of the way. Uh, the question marks, uh, the health and availability of Von Miller is a piece for them. Mm -hmm. Um, And how will their offensive coordinator, Ken Dorsey, do in year two? Those are the two questions, according to ESPN. Not a ton of questions, honestly. Let's go to Miami. Miami. Ceiling and floor. Ceiling, I will say their ceiling is 11 and 6. Shortchange them just a bit, 12 and 5. Okay. And their floor is 7 and 10. You're very, very good at what you do. Because they, they, their floor is logical because of Tua. Well, it says the biggest X factor is the defense's acclimation to Vic Fangio's system. Hmm. Well, I know you and I would think, really? Is, isn't it just whether or not Tua's able to play? No. Yeah. Now, of course, uh, according to this, and we all know this, uh, Miami took a big hit with the injury to Jalen Ramsey in training yes. camp. Um, and they will have to find ways to make it work until Ramsey gets back. Um, and they don't even mention. That's what makes these things funny. They don't even mention Tua. But, yeah, I, I think, Don, anyone with a pulse knows. I'm not saying as Tua goes, so the team goes. This is a team that fought hard in the playoffs without Tua. Yeah. But, no, I, I have a question. That's my biggest question with them. If you tell me Tua is healthy all year, they're gonna, they could be just every bit as good as the Jets. Yeah, I, I think they could be competing for the division. They yes. could be in that conversation. They'd be in that healthy. conversation, yes. Um, all right, that takes us to the Patriots. Patriots ceiling I would have at ten and seven. So does so does ESPN. And I would say their floor would be five and twelve. Are you are you looking now? I'm not looking. I swear to God, I'm not looking. Mm. I mean, Anthony, this is now getting kind of impressive. He's I'm, very I'll good at what he does. Really good here. I'm Mr. Joe Football. Yeah, I've got exactly my computer right. up, but I'm looking at Twitter. You know what I'm looking at right now? Huh. Uh, Mad Dog Sports Radio is promoting a new show on their channel, Beetle and Decker. I'm looking. That's what I'm staring at. Michelle Beetle and Eric Decker. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to turn it to the TV there, so that I, I don't have anything up. <laughs> and, and Anthony will be the first to tell you I don't look at his emails. We got Michelle Beetle there, Mikey. Uh, Signed yeah, to a big are. deal. Look at Decker. Deal. You're She's the one with the high wife, right, Mikey? <laughs> so it's, what's her name? Mikey, if we were to rank the uh, top wives, hottest wives, Decker's in the conversation. Um, all right, that is correct. And then we go to the New York Jets, ceiling and floor. Let's see if Don can Jets. close it out. Um, uh, I would say ceiling 12 and 5. Correct. Wow. And the floor, I will go since 
since the Eagles and the and the and the Bills floor was eight and nine, I'll go slightly less. I'll say seven and ten. Oh my God, Anthony, come on, man! This, this guy, <laughs> he nailed every one. Forty years, Peter. Forty, more than forty now. He's been watching football. But once, once you, once I got the groove of what we were doing. Yeah, so it confused you at first. Well, well because I, 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 I'm you're, still... You're a caveman this, scared honestly, by a modern flying machine. I, but once I, you I figure love it our out. company. I love it. I, mm, mm, mm. Love it. Yeah, yeah, we know. You take time to talk to executives. This is a Tonka truck thing. I mean, this is just something. Let's just, let's just you know, pull something out of our rectum and see if we can get somebody excited. Because it's football, so let's just come up with a list. You know, uh, this, is, this is Tonka truck, but it's fun. Tonka truck is fun. We talked about that yesterday. I, 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 you know, floor and ceiling, you know, sure. What if the sky catches fire? What do we do? Well, I, I don't know. That would be tough, Don, to rate how, how you do it. When the, when the... I wouldn't think it'd be good. Let's, let's talk to people on, on the phone. <laughs> I, I love how you put it. It's, you it's can people. say let's go to the phones, but what we're doing no, is talking uh, to people. Let's, it's humans. And there's even one phone line open. You can get in on any topic you want. Uh, let's start with Justin in New Jersey. Hey, Justin. Hey, guys. How you doing? How you doing? Very good. So I wanted to ask, uh, so Peter, you're talking about watching Hard Knocks. I want to see if you guys noticed this as well. Uh, I saw that when things started to go wrong in the practice, did you notice how Roger started to kind of like re almost reprimand the coaches saying, like, well, how many more times are we going to do this until you figure it out that it's not right? So my thing is that I, my take is just that I think there's going to be an issue and probably in those first six weeks since they have a pretty tough first six weeks where there's going to be a conflict that's going to just bring them down to the ground. I, I just see something happening and I feel like him and, and Salah are going to crash where Salah is going to have to be the head coach and really like support the, the locker room and have to say something that might ruffle mm. Rogers' feathers. Yeah, but but it's also out of his realm, right? I mean, I know I know Rodgers knows defense. He's been this is his 19th year in the league, but you know he's got his offensive coordinator in Nathaniel Hackett. I can't see them butting heads. Now, could he could he go after Sala over certain decisions in game time? I, I guess it's possible. I, I, I but I don't know, Peter. Uh, I'm not going to go by a, a few things he said during camp and, and extrapolate it out to that he's going to butt heads with Sala. I could see if they have a losing season. That he may not want Sala back, but do you think there's going to be anything during the course? Uh, I guess I, I'm not. I'm not seeing it as inevitable. Do you? No, I don't. But I mean, uh, can things be complicated when you have a player who's essentially running the show? Yeah, of course. But you never know how this kind of thing is going to play out. It, it, it could. It could always go left. No, I mean, listen. When you start to lose, that's when the cracks show, right? So let's say they lose a tough game, and and could could Rogers after the game say, I, I don't know why coach didn't go for it on fourth down, or we got to do a better right. job coaching? Or, like, I guess that's possible. That's where you have to be be mindful. Uh, let's let's keep things rolling here, and go to Brian in Milburn. Hey, Brian. Hey, Peter. How you doing? Um, and Don, how you doing? Uh, Good. You know what? I really appreciate you yesterday doing what you did with Michael. You know, Michael is one of the only people I think like got them one of them announcer jobs in Major League Baseball. He's really critical on the Yankees, so I give him that. But for you to sit there and say what you said yesterday, it was so much what Yankee fans was thinking about. We we just say we understand, Michael, but we tired of hearing excuses. We tired of you getting hurt, injured players. We just tired of it. So what's going to change? And I'm glad you said what you said. Thank you so much. And, oh, and the Michael Jackson and the Elvis conversation yesterday was spot on. But I think Michael Jackson got him. Thank you. I think so, too. Yeah, I'm with you, Brian, on that. I think I think Elvis is the – I mean, Michael's the number one biggest star. But we, we that is something we talked about doing, getting into the numbers there. But, yeah, no, I hear you. And, I, and ultimately, all of these conversations about, well, what they thought was, you know, the reason that they thought they could run it back was – and, you know, with the injuries, ultimately, all of those things fall on the person who decides who the players are. That, and that's what makes it a yeah. tough job. How many times have we said, how many times have we said Joe Douglas's future is now completely wrapped up in what Aaron Rodgers does? Okay. He's the one who ultimately made the choice. We're going to throw everything out there and do whatever we have to do to get Aaron Rodgers. And now, even though Joe Douglas has done other nice things, we love a few moves that he's made. 
There, there have been a couple of moves that he's made that have been absolutely fantastic. Where he's, I feel like he's hosed other teams. But if he gets it wrong with the quarterback, he's going to be gone. He knows that. The, the, what makes the Cashman situation unique is it right. feels like it's the only GM now, position that's untouchable. Now, the thing is, is that he did get it wrong with the quarterback. He's hoping Rodgers can now save him from that. Right. So how Rodgers plays will determine whether we care that he got it wrong with Zach Wilson. As a matter of fact, g good thing he drafted Zach Wilson and not Justin Fields because Justin Fields probably would have played well enough that they wouldn't go after Aaron Rodgers. The disaster of Zach Wilson led them t to this path. But ultimately, if it doesn't work out, it's not going to be because he went out and got Rodgers. It's going to be the reason he went out and got Rodgers. So Zach Wilson will eventually be his downfall if this Rodgers thing doesn't work. But he's made good trades. I mean, the 2020 draft, notwithstanding, he's drafted pretty well. But the 2020 draft, and, and it circles back to if he got it wrong on Becton, then that might lead to why Rodgers might be a failure here. Because Becton was supposed was drafted to be the left tackle. He was actually drafted to be what, ironically, Andrew Thomas has turned out to be with the Giants. Remember no. when they the day of the draft the Giants got fleeced? It looked like all like what were the Giants doing taking Thomas at six and and look at Becton drop to the Jets and how much better the Jets were. Now Becton may even never even play left tackle in his career and everybody's loving Andrew Thomas. That's why Graydon drafts the next day is Tonka Truck. Right. Uh, the the Jamal Adams trade was a beautiful piece of work by oh gorgeous. By it, it, it crippled Seattle. So he's done a great job, but he knows that ultimately he'll have to answer to what happens at the quarterback position, which to Don's point so far has been a fail. Can he get it right with uh, with Rodgers? Let's go to Mark in Jacksonville. Hey, Mark. Hey, uh, gentlemen. Thanks for having me on. How are you, how are you doing today? Good, Good man. Yourself. Hey, the caller who called about the 1976 Yankees Something uh, really exciting happened that year, too, is after two years of playing in Shea Stadium, that's when the uh, new renovated stadium mm -hmm. opened up. So there was just such an air of optimism right from the get-go from that season. So I think what makes this season frustrating, I'm not going to gripe on the Yankees, is from where their expectations were compared to where they are today. And it made me think of the 65 Yankees, because after winning four straight pennants, they won 77 games in 65 with essentially the same lineup. So I think it's probably a similarity the management failed to look forward at the aging players and, and what the product would be on the yeah. field. I was wondering what you thought about that. Yeah, and you better hope it doesn't end up like it did in the mid-60s where they went through a really difficult time. You know, where they did not win again until they got to the mid-70s. Like, so I don't think that's going to happen to the Yankees, Peter, that they're going to go through a, you know, a decade of bad baseball. But Show me where they're going to be that much improved. It's not a great free agent class. If they don't get Otani, yeah, they'll, I'm sure if Brian is still here, and every indication is he will be, he'll tinker with it. He'll try to make it better. But I don't know if they're going to be able to do anything to make the fans feel any better about the 2024 team. Usually this would be the time where they make some major splash, some major, major trade. Look what we did. They'll fire Boone. They'll bring in somebody that nobody cares about. And we'll see if they can make some sort of a splash, but I, I don't see where it's going to be. I don't think Otani's coming here. Let's go to uh, Chris. Down. Hey, Chris. Hey, guys. How are you? Good. How are you? Hey, so you guys have two couple points. One sports, but one movies. You were just talking about the you, know, you guys got to put in keep fear to that top ten. I, I, I got to say, his, his performance was great. I don't know if that movie is as historic as, like, say, Deer Hunter or movies like that, but I, I did enjoy that. It was I a got really much Cape Fear. Deer Hunter's top five, I think, that Cape Fear in just terms of his performance and how what he It did. is good. It is very good. The, the, the two points that I want to make in terms of sports, though, is I called in on the 19th after they got swept from Boston. And again, I'm not going to make light of it, but Chris O'Smith and I shouldn't be saying to you guys, hey, the Yankee brass, I don't know nobody should say, hey, we need to wake up in the organization. Let's try to find some avenues to go in. I think that, that Don, you make some really good points about the Yankees and the Mets, and I like your objective opinion, but I think it's not the arrogance of the Yankee fans. I think it's the arrogance of the brass that are making those decisions. And the other thing is, would you think that if you're comparing it to football, the Yankees have become the Dallas of football. 
and I don't mean that in a bad way. I know you're a fan of that, but think about it. They, they make it to the playoffs, but they never get to the full way, and they're living off of their past. Oh, there's no question. The Dallas Cowboys have won, what, two playoff games in the last 25 years? Uh, the iconic brand, the Cowboys, are, are based on things that happened a long, long time ago. I, I, I'm not mad at that. I think that's, that's very good. That's a very good comparison. But I never said the Yankee fans are arrogant, Peter. I think the Yankees are arrogant. They're Brad, sometimes- Hal, and, and Brian, and the, the way they conduct themselves, I think they walk around like we're the big bad Yankees. And I'm sorry, what have you done for me lately? Right, the yeah, Celtics I, are an iconic franchise. I mean, uh, were, were they walking around? Were the big bad Celtics when they lost 17 straight games in Doc Rivers' first year? Or the Canadians who haven't won a Stanley Cup in 30 years? I mean, uh, eventually, you just become like everybody else, and that's where they are right now. They're like everybody else. All right, a lot more to talk about. For every phone line jam to talk jam. Jets, Giants, Yankees as well. We'll get to more of that. Plus, Anthony's going to have a brilliant ENN at 6 o'clock. But, Don, first, I'd like to tell you about Peppy Motors. If- Away's iconic suitcases redesigned, mix, match, and look good everywhere. More color, more luggage, more travel. Away. Shop at awaytravel.com. Word is spreading fast about Colonial Pen's guaranteed life insurance. Rates are designed to fit your budget even if you are on a fixed income. To learn more about the life insurance plan everyone's talking about, log on to colonialpen.com. That's colonialpen.com. Hey. Hey. Rental? Yep. You? Yeah. You know your shoes untied. No. Oh. Don't let a boxy suit ruin your night. Read from the Black Tots Welcome to the Athletic Basketball hey, Show. Folks, the league is in absolute chaos. Subscribe today. Tired of trying countless diet and exercise programs that ultimately don't work? That's because success often isn't about willpower. It's about your biology. Prescription medication can help you overcome cravings, balance blood sugar, or help you feel fuller longer so you can finally tackle the barriers to weight loss and discover a happier, healthier you. Because it's not about what you've lost, but what you've found. Take the quiz at joinfound.com to see if Found's prescription weight weight loss program is right for you. from ShopRite is now in your phone on Instacart. Get free free delivery on your first order. This is Alpha Brain. If your gym workouts lack focus, Alpha Brain is there for support. Look, it's not hard to get, all right? You know how to shop. If you've got a lot going on or need to think clearly, get Alpha Brain by Onyx. Get focus now. It's your igniter. We'll help get that fixed. Then your oven issues, done. An app?
app to fix my oven. Yep, an app to fix your oven. That's correct. Introducing Front Door. Download today to Video Chat on Expert. If you've been diagnosed with mesothelioma or asbestos lung cancer, choose the right law firm by asking, what are your highest verdicts? What experience do you have? How many lawyers are on staff? How many clients have you represented? Speak to Weitz and Luxembourg at 800-LAW-6789 to get unmatched answers. It's the biggest financial decision of your life. Call 800-LAW-6789 or visit misowin.com. times in every season where the games matter more. I want to win. That's why I'm here. And there's a clear line of sight. We still got a job to do. We're taking it one day at a time. To fulfill your destiny. A lot of ball games left. We got a lot of work to do, so we got to pick it up. I wouldn't count us out. Within 15 seconds of logging onto social media, the algorithm has your daughter in its crosshairs. It sends her a steady flow of images telling her she isn't thin enough, pretty enough. They invade her brain, causing body dysmorphia, anxiety, depression, leading to the worst rates of eating disorders, self-harm, and suicide we have ever known. All while she's sitting right next to you on her phone. Congress knows, but it refuses to act. Don't let her suffer the secret pain alone. Use your voice. Demand a plan. Join us at the Center for Countering Digital Hate. ProtectingKidsOnline.org Because it's up to you to protect your children from social media nightmares. Join us. For her. For your daughter. Well, that's uh, Saturday. It's Saturday. It's a Saturday vehicle. Anthony, you geared up? Oh, yeah. We had our meeting today. Everybody's ready to go. You know what my question would be if I were still doing it? Tell me. What are we eating? Yeah, well, that's the only thing that's... It's a me and Ray right. situation because Dan and Greg will be at the uh, at, uh, at MetLife. At MetLife. You know, so also it's going to be at MetLife on Saturday. The Jets. Shaq. That's right. Wow. Is he, go is he going? Hard to give him his tickets. And is he going? I, I I would think so. I mean, I, I again, I told him, I better not see these on uh, the secondary market, and he better behave himself. I, 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 you know, I gotta tell I'm not going to get mad at him if he decides not to go to a preseason game. Might admire him. Now, now, I don't know if I don't know, Anthony. I don't know if one's allowed to make a bet and then make all sorts of caveats afterwards uh -huh. on, on how someone's supposed to enjoy the the fruits of their labor. We do it a lot. But they won. He won the tickets fair and square. Those are his tickets. Oh, but I, I'm not allowed to make rules. How? I can, but because I, I, I can. Hold on. So no someone, contract signed. I mean, I came through with the tickets, but yeah. But I, if I someone bets two hundred dollars, then I, you say, hey, but you better spend this money on something positive. Well, what does that mean? I want to buy crack. No, no, no. He's not buying crack. Excuse me. Shaq, don't do crack. I'm just saying. No, I'm, I'm just saying. saying I'm I don't saying, know. You're allowed to make rules after a bet. No, no, he represents this radio station and me, and I don't need him. Tickets that I gave him. Be rowdy. Get to get into fights. Act like a drunken moron at the jet games. No, I'll take him right away. <laughs> I, I told him this, <laughs> and he's cool with it. Well, I can't make rules. Why can't I make rules? I, I listen. Maybe it, it's you know how much this cost me. This is, this is one of the biggest bets. That's how bets. This is the biggest bet in the history of this radio station. I didn't go and ask, you know, Pete Doherty, our sales guy, you know, get him into the building. I went out and paid for season tickets. And I paid extra for parking pads. I didn't have to do that. You paid so extra if I want to have some caveats, some rules, no, we're going to do it. There's, there's, there's going to be some codicils in this little agreement. I, I'm just, I'm just no. simply saying. People might argue you're not allowed to make rules after the bet. Those the bet's people, been made. Those people would be wrong. I mean, we, we didn't have rules when we ran this bet. You didn't go, well, by the way, when, when you win, just know. Now, I think the decent thing to do would be to win those tickets and not then turn around and sell them. I well, agree with you 100%. I'm telling him he can't. This isn't a great argument for us to have. Why? 
How'd the football picks go this year, guys? Poorly. What do you mean? Oh, we didn't pay it off. No, we didn't was... pay it off because you know what? Because I work with gutless pukes. What do you have? Oh, it's a dunk tank. It, it, the dunk tank was lame, and then we weren't allowed to have it. That's what happened. If only Don could have gotten his dreams to come true, we would have taken the loser, which would have been Don, and physically beaten him with a brick at the. Oh, well, we should have phys- We should have paid Lawrence Taylor to lay me out. Or you know Mike Tyson to punch me in the head. That, now that's a bad clowns. But no, the, do not put, don't pay me as the bad guy. All right, I honored the bet. I told him I'd get him season tickets. Then there was, and I totally, totally could have went the lame way, have him up in the last row. You didn't do that though. These tickets are fantastic. They're they're in they're undercover. If it rains, these you are the- fabulous tickets. Uh, no, no. So if I've got some codicils, he's gonna have to take it, and he will, because Shaq's a guy. He's a good guy. Don't don't spin it into me being a bad guy. No, no, I'm not spinning. No, this is quite the bet, bet payoff. I saw the the season tickets yesterday. They're gorgeous. Nice fat pack of tickets. Who doesn't want that? Now, uh, Ballard has chimed in on the uh, De Niro conversation. He says the three movies we didn't mention that he would have. Okay. Would be number three, Copland. No, stop it. Number two, Midnight Run. Very good. And number one, Casino, which yeah, I agree. Casino, to me, Casino gains ground on Goodfellas to me every year. How do you casino, like that? Casino, when I first saw Casino, I had the opinion that a lot of other people did. That it was just basically a Goodfellas ripoff, which you're ripping off yourself because Scorsese. But then you, but then you, people. but then you got older and you and you but figured then out you're wrong. As I got older, it doesn't. It, it's still not Goodfellas. But uh, on its it, own, it's still an outstanding film. Copland's a nice film. Copland is not in the category with those movies. And neither is Cape Fear. I like Cape Fear, too. But we're talking about iconic films. Deer Hunter, iconic. Godfather, iconic. Goodfellas, iconic. I can't. I won't put Casino as iconic, but it's close. Copland. It's, it's, it's a nice movie. You like Copland as much as the next guy. Yeah, it's because it again, we live in a world. If we're not honoring it, we're disrespecting it. All right, how about this? How about this? A hot take. Meet the Parents is is higher up than some of these movies we talked about, isn't it? From an iconic standpoint, Meet the Meet the Parents. I got to tell you, you know, a lot of times we we it seems we always leave out comedies in these conversations. Like you're not allowed to consider comedy great. Meet the Parents, Don, if we really get into the meat of this conversation and we talk about the cultural impact and how much people love it, the rewatchability, Meet the Parents is up there, my well, friend. Because there's something wrong with Hollywood. Go ahead. It doesn't respect the comedy. It just doesn't. Like, how many comedies are up for Best Picture? It's almost as if you're a comedy that you can't be considered uh, an award-winning, iconic film. No, it makes no sense. Uh, but think about it. The great films, give, you give it a list of the top 100 films of all time. How many of them are comedies? You'll get, like, Some Like It Hot will make it in there. But, like, what? Because it, it like, Something About Mary is an amazingly funny film. Well, like, why can't it be considered a great film? Why? Because it's a goof? Why only serious movies can be considered amazing and great and iconic? So the Meet the Parents, a franchise. And it made a ton of money. And you think it's easy for De Niro, who played, you know, the taxi driver and all these iconic, that he could just turn around and and, and play a, 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 a grandfather and be funny? You know how hard that is to do? He, it's, it's very, very good. Meet the Parents is a forever comedy. That's, I, I, that's a very fair call. Now, are you, of the, are you of the ilk that enjoyed the movie Heat or thought it was a big disappointment or both? Uh. I liked it. I, I wouldn't put it up there. I mean, it's got the, 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 the cast is tremendous. Val Kilmer, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Sean Penn. Right? But Sean it was Penn considered at the time. Carlito's way. I'm sorry. I That's Carlito's way. It, it, uh, it's which which neither De Niro or. Uh, no, I got. Uh, I just had him. I had a senior moment, if you will. It's, yeah, you confuse De Niro and Pacino, and then and then it's Kilmer and Penn. There's a lot going on there. From, uh, he's in. The, he's also in um, Midnight Cowboy and. Um, why am I vegging on his name? And he was also in Heat. 
Either way, Heat was considered a big disappointment at the time because everyone was like, oh, my God, Pacino and De Niro with another huge crime movie, and it wasn't that great, but it was, it was still a fun watch. You go back and watch Heat right now. You will enjoy it. You've got to well. set aside three or four hours, but you're going to enjoy it. Uh, let's take some phone calls. Let's go to Tom in Staten Island. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, what's up, guys? John uh, Boyd is who I was thinking about. I'm sorry. There you go. Yeah. Hey, Tom. Hey, what's up? What's up? Uh, so, I'm just wondering how you guys feel about uh, so Robert Sala going into this year. Uh, last year, I won him fired after he uh, mishandled the quarterback situation. And uh, just the epic collapse at the end there it was r ridiculous. So, uh, going into this season, Aaron Rodgers comes in and he just, he, it's like he takes over the team. Yeah, I just want to know how you guys feel about it. I mean, is he is he the alpha male of this team? I don't think you could say that. Um, I think the best thing that you can say, honestly, and we're, we're we like Robert Sala. His grade is incomplete. You you can't tell me. There's no evidence he's a great coach. No, not yet. Now, now unfortunately, because of the record, there's only evidence that he's a bad coach. But I don't think that's fair either. But there's no way you could say, oh, I, I think Robert Sala's a great coach. You can't. What, what, what's your evidence? And I am totally with you, Tom. We said it at the time. I thought that was ill-advised of him to allow them to wear uh, the T-shirts, the disrespect Zach the way that they did. I really thought he kind of got led down the primrose path by his players. And I thought that was, I thought that was ill-advised. I didn't think that was right that, what he did with the whole shirt. Thing. I forget what game it was going into. Um, but the white shirts and all that, that was that was wrong. That was on him. But, Peter, Let's go. I'm sorry. I can't say that he's no, a, no, what, what evidence do I have? I, I have no it's evidence. 100%, it's 100% incomplete. We do not know whether or not Robert Sala can go out there and get you a win with his brilliant coaching. We haven't seen that yet. Um, the, the, the stuff that happened with the quarterback last year was bad. And he did sort of lose control of the team to a certain degree, to, to what Don pointed out with the shirts and everything. And, yeah, I mean, when you really look at that season isolated, they started off with a great record, and they completely collapsed down the stretch. There's no other way to cut it. No, he's, he's, it's, it's a short leash for Robert Sala this year, too. I mean, he doesn't have another year to disappoint. Imagine, imagine if, if Rodgers plays great and it feels like they have the pieces and they're still not winning games. He, it, he's right. absolutely gone. I'm sorry. I don't care how great your quarterback is. It, it's almost impossible. I guess Mike McCarthy, I guess, would be the example that you can overcome bad coaching. And I don't think Mike McCarthy's a bad coach. I just don't think he's a Super Bowl caliber coach. He's not a great coach. You know, it's it's difficult to overcome bad coaching. And well, he, he might have put himself in a position coach. to win. And if we're having conversations on Monday, Peter, about an ill-advised fourth down um, decision or we, clock management or wasting timeouts and he's costing them games, that's going to be a problem. Uh, let's go back to the phones and now go to uh, Don in Connecticut. Hey, Don. Hi, Don. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, something happened last night in, in uh, the game that would absolutely infuriate me if I was House Feinbrenner. If you look right. at it, in 2017, in the, uh, Game 7 versus the Astros, they got shut down by Charlie Morton. Shut out. They've never gotten any better since then. Last night, they get shut down by Charlie Morton again. Right. With all the same varieties, looking stupid against his wicked curveball. It is amazing that it's six just, years later, nothing's, nothing's changed. But I mean, again, everybody's shutting the down the Yankees, so it really doesn't matter that it was Charlie Morton. You know, because, I know, but because because well, Elder I mean, the night before one hit him basically, and the and oh no, I know that. Yeah, I know that, but I mean, if you were Hal and you're and you know you're looking for the team to improve every year, and they haven't gotten they haven't gotten any farther than they did since 2017. I just think that was really Don, ironic that Don, they made a bold it. move. I'm so you, you have to consider it a bold move of letting Joe Girardi go because they thought he was the wrong guy for the job. And then the guy that replaces him did not go any farther. Well, what, is that, what does that say? Now, maybe they would have bottomed out sooner with Joe Girardi. That would probably be their answer. But they thought, yeah. hey, he's not the right guy. And then you fast forward six years later and they're no better. If anything, they're worse. I mean, yeah, I mean, and I know Boone's a great guy and everything. And I think he would get another job right away. But I mean, we just, we, we just need, a, we need a new look. 
I mean, Michael, the other day, he, he was talking about how the Yankees have the most, they, they've been thrown out the most on the base runners for anyone in the league. They've been walked off more than anyone in the league. If you and, were going to defend Aaron Boone, then you got to fire Brian Cashman because the reason they're losing is because the players aren't any good. If you get to defend Brian Cashman, then you got to kill Boone because they're not winning. The point is, Don, you. is you got a clean house. If they, if they end up finishing in last place with an under 500 record, that to me is bottoming out. You got you got a clean house. Have to, and it makes no sense to let Brian go and keep Aaron. So if you're gonna let Brian go, then you're gonna have to let everybody go. Peter, we talked about it earlier in the week. You can't fire Aaron Boone and say, "Okay, that's what we did. It's all his fault." Yeah, I, I, you can hear it right now from the fan base. They won't think that's enough because they don't think Boone's the problem. This is not. You're not. We can say a lot about Yankee fans, Don. This, these are not dumb baseball fans. These are this is an educated fan base, at least with regard to baseball. Okay, they, you can't just make a move that you think would shut them up because they know it's not Boone. They may not like Boone. They don't love Boone. He's not giving them a lot to hang on to right now. A, they're terrible, and B, he rarely ever says anything critical about his team. And of course, New York fans don't dig that. But they also know he's not really the issue here either. 1-800-919-3776. More of your calls. Plus, ENN at 6. Peter and Don on the case show. 9870 ESPN. Yes. I needed something in the shop, comfortable. I wear breath boots, as you see, got them on my feet right now. Keeps you warm, it keeps you dry, triple layered comfort. Comfortable in the morning, comfortable in the afternoon. I feel like kind of like sneakers. They're waterproof, durable. Been wearing them for over a year now. They're absolutely amazing. This is the only shoe I wear in here now. Brown boots are cool. Wearing brunt boots, my feet, my back, and my legs don't hurt at the end of the day. Go online and try any of our gear here on the job for 30 days, risk-free. suitcases redesigned with even more traveler friendly features in new colors inspired by the world more color more luggage more travel shop at awaytravel.com we just shipped our millionth monthly coffee subscription box we're sending custom thank you gifts to everyone on our team who helped us get there I had to call Eric at Custom Inc. Custom Inc. has been with us from the beginning, and he makes sure that we get everything we need and even reminds us of our own company milestones. This milestone, though, I get to tell him about. He is every bit as excited as we are and knows great quality products we can customize and send for the gifts. Celebrate all your milestones with custom gear. Get started today at custominc.com.
This is Lucas. No, you're cheating? You're cheating, bro. He could use some no, focus. You get good. No, you get good. To make things go off without a hitch, turn to Alpha Brain. It's not hard to get. I mean, you know how to shop. Get Alpha Brain. Focus where it matters most. Our idea of the perfect day? You, your best friend. Yeah, buddy. You ready to run? And Quattro All Wheel Drive. Own the elements in the Audi Q5. Let's go, buddy. Get exceptional offers at your local Audi dealer. Drizzly makes it easy to shop a huge selection of beer, wine, and liquor from wherever I am. I just open the app, find what I want, and it's at my door in under 60 minutes. Drizzly. Ding dong, Drizzly. We about to turn it up. Stream Yankees baseball on the Yes app, presented by T-Mobile. Visit linkedbylovetv.org to learn more about kidney disease, transplantation, and prevention. Get the facts, get checked, and get healthy. And we can rule the world. The hype around this team cannot be overstated. Previously on Homegrown, the docu-series where stars earn their stripes. I'm so happy right now. I can't describe my feelings. This is unbelievable. This is what we played for all year. A dream come true. This season, who's next to get the call? This is the moment. I'm going to the big league. See ya! The kid does it again! Go behind the scenes with the Yankees minor league teams. And once you get the taste of it, it makes me work even harder. Watch full episodes of Homegrown streaming on the Yes app. Presented by Wendy's. in an ad that was given 12 seconds to remind you that if you're high, just don't drive. Because if you feel different, you drive different. It's illegal to drive high everywhere anyway. Within 15 seconds of logging onto social media, the algorithm has your daughter in its crosshairs. It sends her a steady flow of images telling her she isn't thin enough, pretty enough. They invade her brain, causing body dysmorphia, anxiety, depression, leading to the worst rates of eating disorders, self-harm, and suicide we have ever known. All while she's sitting right next to you on her phone. Congress knows, but it refuses to act. Don't let her suffer the secret pain alone. Use your voice. Demand a plan. Join us at the Center for Countering Digital Hate. ProtectingKidsOnline.org because it's up to you to protect your children from social media nightmares. Join us for her, for your daughter. he didn't win for Malcolm X. We call it a makeup call in the business. Like, it was good. I, I do think it's a good point. I really, I do think people are overstating, like, the decision that it's a, it's official, Waller's going to be a beast. I do think it's being a little overstated. But I think today, Don, that's just a makeup right there. That's just, it's doing what had to, what should have been done yesterday. I think you're right. It was good! Is, uh, and what was the timing of the, um, the, your comment, your argument with Michael? It was after the point got right? No. Oh, that's right. It wasn't. So, Yeah, so that was... See, no, I, how, how does something to go viral not be point guard? Well, because maybe the people making the decisions were worried that they would, you know, rock the boat. Don't rock the boat, baby. Rock the boat. Don't tip the boat over. Rock the boat. Oh, oh. And, and, and by the way, can you, can you just feel the energy around this Red Sox-Yankee series? I mean, everybody's talking, am I right? Well, I was going to bring this up tomorrow. But no, tomorrow all right, tease us. Tease us, tease us for tomorrow. Okay, I'll bring it up tomorrow. 
but I do have a it's not even that hot a take. It's a you can you can pick it up with your hands, but it's still going to be uncomfortable. Take. <laughs> okay. Well, you look forward to that tomorrow. <laughs> uh, let's go to VJ, All Long Island. Hey, Hi, VJ. VJ. Hey, P. Don. Thank you guys for having me on the call today. I appreciate it. I got a quick couple of points. My first point is anybody that thinks Michael is a homer needs to go to their radio dial and turn it as fast as they can. And every time they get to ninety-eight point seven, just keep going. Just keep going. That guy's as real as it gets about the Yankees overall. Don, love you. I think you are absolutely better than Rothenberg any day of the week. Wow. Uh, I didn't know that was. That's it. I'm sorry. I love Dave, but there's really no competition there. Wow. I love what VJ's saying. As as it relates to. Oh, oh, Peter, wait for it, man. You're going to love it again. As as, as it relates to Boone, listen, you can only play what you have, right? And and that's it. The guy, if you're going to fire him, fire him. But you can only play what you have. For Cashman, heavy is the head that wears the crown. If real Yankees fans are looking at this team, the guy that needs to be fired is Michael Fishman. He's the one that's put this analytic department together. He's the one that's built it this way. Cashman listens to him. He's not the analytic guy. He takes his advice, and he makes the calls. And yeah, but, the, last, but, the, but the, um, the head of it's still Cashman, so I'm not sure that would be enough, but go ahead. I, I get that the head of it is Cashman. But, but overall, if you're looking at who built the analytic department, who's going to blame this entire thing, you got to blame it on Michael Fishman. you got to blame it on him. And any real Yankee fan knows that because you've done your research on it. My last point, and then I'll, I'll let you guys be. But, Peter, you came into this show as like the Roman Reigns of this show. Mm. People thought you were overrated. You didn't deserve the spotlight. That's you only had a couple of moves. Your knowledge wasn't great. But, man, what you did yesterday, you transformed into the tribal chief. And every cool. single person in the ESPN Nation needs technology at this point. Thank you guys for taking my call. Wow. I, I, that's an honor, what he just said. I mean, because when Roman Reigns got into WWE, it's like people were excited at first, but then it was too much. And then everyone hated him. And then when he came back and became the tribal chief, everyone said, oh. Oh, he didn't appreciate how great Roman Reigns was. Wow. I don't know if that's true. And my guess is most of these people will still hate me tomorrow, but I appreciate you very much, friend. You've won a lot more people over than you've lost, in my opinion. Well, l- listen, I-, I think in general, yeah, the, 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 the haters are well outnumbered, but they're very loud. Well, haters are always very loud. Let me put it this way. You won over everyone that you had the ability to win over. The people that you haven't won over can't be won over. If you know what I, I mean. I'd have to announce a much bigger change than just a thought on the right. Yankees, you're saying. Yes. Let's try to squeeze one more call before the E. Let's go to E in Queens. What up, E? What's going on, guys? Happy Friday, Junior. Yes. Um, first of all, VJ, uh, great call. Glad that he buttered you two guys up, but there's no way that you can say Michael isn't a homer. Who's the biggest Yankee boy? You know, this side of the Mississippi. Um, as far as the two points that I wanted to make quickly, uh, when it comes to the supporting acting on The Sopranos, there is, I forgot one of you two made the point. It's terrible. It really is hard to continue to watch. It's not, it's not supporting acting. It's, there are a couple supporter, supporting actors that are, first of all, I disagree with your take about Michael, but this, it's, it's the supporting, it's not, there are a couple supporting actors that are rough, but what I said was the guest actors, the people who yes. play the bit roles are terrible. Yeah. It's hard to watch, and I've been home with COVID all week, I had to cancel a trip, so clearly I had nothing else to do but to, to sort of binge the Sopranos, but it's the, they're, they're hard to watch. Peter, I made a... Um, I made, like, a a contest for you or a challenge for you next year to pick a team, um, either the Mets or the Yankees, to go through the entire season with. I liked it, yeah. We we know that sometimes you you can be a fraud, and that's okay. I didn't mean in perpetuity you become that fan. I mean, every year you're picking one of the two and you're riding those teams. For for that that year. For that year. Oh, I like that. And I think it would really get at Michael when you're giving very sort of opinionated Yankee uh, takes. And he's just like, you've been a Yankee fan for a minute. So I just want to see that happen. And I can say I've been a Yankee fan since 2023. Yes. That's, that's, you know what that sure is? we don't have that drop. Right. That is would be the all for the God of Yankees. 
Yeah. All right. Well, you know what it's time for, guys? A beautiful Anthony Pusick-led ENN. You do not want to miss it. I promise. There's no ENN like a Pusick-led ENN right before a Friday with three weeks left in the NFL preseason. Stay right here on 98.7 ESPN and yes. The Michael K Show. You never get old. Seeing doesn't come easy for me. I need glasses and pair eyewear is my new favorite glasses brand. They have really cute, lightweight, comfortable frames. And the best part is you can change up your look. If you get a few toppers, the possibilities are endless. The combos that you can come up with. What? Pair has solved everything I don't like about being a glasses wearer, which is looking the same every day. It's no fun. Welcome to the Aura Sleep Lab. <laughs> you need a bit more deep sleep. Getting enough high quality sleep increases immunity. Why? Because sleep helps fend off sickness. A good night's sleep boosts your number of infection fighting antibodies and cells. And with your Aura Ring, you can learn how to sleep deep and keep your immunity up. It's like having a sleep lab on your finger. Go to sleep with, with AuraRing.com. See everything your restaurant can do with tools from Square. Get a POS that connects to a KDS so you can handle orders ASAP. Reach more customers with online ordering and QR codes. Use pocket-sized hardware so you can turn tables faster. And get one account for everything so you can take care of it all and take it easy, too. Get your all-in-one restaurant system and sign up at Square.com today. Jeff has a problem. It started when he ordered his brunt work boots. He's beating them up 14 hours a day, going on about how they're comfortable as sneakers. But he never takes them off. At my place, with his buddies, at night. I caught him in the shower, and he just goes, what, they're waterproof? I don't know if they're going to make it through the 30-day risk-free trial. Of course they will, babe. They're super durable. I'm not talking about the boots, Jeff. Run the tools you wear. Try us on the job for 30 days risk-free. Ready to do something amazing? Let's go. This is where you learn new skills from the world's best. Get hands-on instructions and have something to show for it with Sessions by Masterclass. I'm going to walk you step-by-step step through what it takes to be a great singer. You will become a more confident negotiator. You're going to feel organized planning your wedding. And once you're done with all that, you could do this, this, or even this. Roll up your sleeves and get started. Sessions by Masterclass. We just signed the lease on our third shop. I guess we're a chain now, right? We've worked so hard to get here. My assistant went to customink.com to get our new uniforms and merch with all the location names. Our custom gear helps him get our brand out into the community. He takes care of all of our custom ink orders. He was able to find great products, upload the new art, and have boxes sent directly to each of the shops. Custom ink makes it so easy. Get started today at, at customink.com. Meet Away's iconic suitcases, redesigned, mix, match, and look good everywhere. More color, more luggage, more travel. Away. Shop at awaytravel.com. Been hiding. Ask your dermatologist about Sutik2 for clearer skin. So clearly you. Sutik2. For us, our expectations don't change. You know, I just believe in this team a lot. This is a team that has a lot of good players. This group gets to tell their own story. What is your healing power? Helping veterans with PTSD, traumatic brain injuries, depression, anxiety, or loneliness? Is your healing power a simple heartfelt letter or being a volunteer? At HealVets.org, you can find out more about the healing power of pen pals, volunteers, and therapy kits. Help Heal Veterans, together with you, has been helping veterans heal. What is your healing power? Find out at HealVets.org. On TV. And it's on TV. We love that. I'd like to start off 
by saying good evening to our good friend, Michael K. Good, go crap on okay. the lake. I don't care. It's not the cleanest, but it's still very funny. It's got a chance to make a run. Good evening to Don and Richard. And tell us one last thing, let me tell mm. you. I think one last thing was at 2.45 of that five-minute conversation we had with Richard in the 4 o'clock hour. I had a senior moment. Don? Shaq, don't do crack. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Don. You can pick it up with your hands, but it's still going to be uncomfortable. Peter? I want to buy crack. Shaq, don't do crack. <laughs> And a lot Peter. of crack talk on this show. Yeah. And Peter again. My triple G breasts are too big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my triple G breasts are too big. Well, I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. That's, that could do something. That's going to. Oh, boy. Uh, that could do something right Peter. there. We're going to rub football all over ourselves today. Yeah. And uh, I got to tell you, Peter, it runs in the family. Let's say good evening to Marco. But there was a face-off. Daddy. Marco, Marco, I'm doing a show. He, he, that's, he cannot resist. That's a nether region drop <laughs> that's going to make a run. We could have Don versus Don again. We didn't think we could. We know! But we might. Wow. But we might. Just came downstairs and asked for the computer. He knows what he wants. Good for him. Good for he him. He also knows he's not allowed. Daddy's working. They... they <laughs> It's interesting. The kids are now, not that they never minded their own before, but they're taking over the house is what you're saying. That's right. You'll well, they think about it. They're, they're at an age that they can just do whatever. They, they run. There's they good run. and bad with it. Like, you can leave the room now. They don't have to have constant supervision. I mean, I mean you can't leave the house, but you know what I mean. <laughs> no, no one's leaving the house. But this is what happens when there is that lapse where now he, you're trying to explain to a five-and-a-half-year-old, I'm on television. Uh, there's a lot of <laughs> Michael K's yeah. work. I love Michael K's work. That was my favorite. Oh, that, well, yeah, that's the thing. It was it was the same with Declan too. Like Michael K, like I'm going to work at the Amico station. Or I'm going to go work at AT and T. I'm going to go work at Michael K. He, he's he's the industry standard now. Well, hey, Holy crap on the okay. lake! I don't care. He might still be on that. He maybe will have that option to go and work with Michael K. You know? Who knows? That's right. Guys, I think this is important. We should get to it. Enter the ESPN New York no-hitter sweepstakes for your chance to win $25,000. Find the no-hitter tile on the ESPN New York app, pick a team, and submit your entry. Today's qualifier is Danielle Trial from Miller Place, New York, who has chosen New York's National League team to throw a no-hitter today. Good choice. The American League team is off. Mm. Presented by MoheganSunCasino.com. For full contest rules, go to ESPNNewYork.com. Guys, I have breaking news. I have breaking news. Tomorrow on ENN, special guest, Kimball, Don's trainer, will join wow, the program. Wow, that's big. That is big. How'd you pull that off? Yay! Well, listen, I was told we needed bigger guests. We got Kimball. Did you speak to him? I texted with Kimball. Okay. He's very excited. Wow. And we're excited, too. And with that, by the way. You're a big boxing guy, right? I hate boxing. <laughs> what am I doing lately? He's kickboxing. Got a good future. Tom McGregor's kickboxing update. Kidding me? You see the picture on Twitter, Peter? Oh, yeah. Don's looking ripped. Oh. Didn't even put gloves on today. What'd you it do was today? boot camp day Ooh. at kickboxing. So what Kimball does is he sets up 12 different stations, and you spend 30 to 45 seconds at each station. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, lifting 25, a 25-pound 25 weight behind your back or bench pressing or going through an obstacle course. Very high energy. You go through them three times in the hour. And then I want to take a picture with him to put on social media. And Kimball's only on Instagram. He's not a Twitter guy. Good for him. You might have saw it on Instagram. So I took the picture, and he's like, no, show the guns. Let's flex. So I flexed. Wow, look at you. Look at you. Did you see it? I'm excited for this. Oh, I, really I saw am. it. I, I found myself uh, excited by it. And he's a fan of the show. This is going to be great. I'm really oh, excited. He's, he's a big fan of the show. He's a big fan of Peter. He listens to Hot. Listen, they had a 6 a.m. class today, so he's actually up before Peter. Wow. He's, uh, he does a 6 a.m. class? That's right. Wow. I don't know if I can work out at 6 a.m. That's got to be. Is this three days in a row for you, Donna, kickboxing? 
No, this is three out of four, and I'm going tomorrow. How do you I'm feel? Gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna You're do doing four. four out of five this I'm week? Do four out of five this How week. How do you feel right now? Fantastic. That's, That's why I want to keep going, because I'm seeing results, and I'm having fun, and I want to make up for not going for a week when I was down the shore. Peter, I was in studio when this happened, when Don went in for his 30-minute hit with uh, Barton Allen. I didn't know it was yeah. 30. And, and Don, and Don chest-bumped Allen. Allen was stunned. Like, he couldn't at believe the, the, energy, the, power? the energy that he came in with. Yeah. And power. And that's, and that's working with Bart Scott. There's a lot of energy there when you're working with Bart. And power. And power. They both did the power hour together. It was amazing. Wow. It was amazing. You guys mentioned the NBA schedule. You guys want to hear well, a little bit sure about did. the Knicks schedule? Yeah, sure. I'd love to. So you know, Peter, you're going to have to ask for tickets. Knicks Celtics opener. So we have that. You got to go, no, Peter? You know, I don't care about basketball for another three months after that. But, yeah, I, 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 it's I try to. It's the opener. Come on, let's do this. I, I would, you know what? You text you wanna, Billy. That's what you do. That's right. Text Billy. Yeah, if he's in town, let's read. Well, because if Billy wants to go, then maybe I could get us tickets. Maybe. We'll see. Knicks versus Bucks on Christmas Day. Tip off at twelve p.m. Oh, hello! On... They love they love giving the Knicks the nooner on Christmas Day. They love they? making Ray Santiago work on Christmas. They really do. But at least it's and early. Alan. He can make it home for dinner. That's right. That's right. I'm always the Christmas Eve dinner, though. But it depends. Everybody does it differently. 15 of the Knicks' first 25 games this season are on the road. And the Knicks have the six most nationally televised games in the NBA this season with 20. Huh. This is an interesting one. Ian Begley pointed out on X. The Knicks play 12 back-to-backs that include travel in 2023-24. The average number is nine per team. And the NBA says that the average number of those back-to-backs in 23-24 is a league low. But the Knicks have 12, so above the average. Mm. That's a pain. I guess I'd have to look at what the travel is for them on some of those back-to-backs. Yeah, but, but that, that's what happens with when you're in the division that you're in because you can you Brooklyn, Philly. There's a lot of easy trips. Right. Like when you're Dallas and you're playing back-to-backs, you probably, other than, you know, San Antonio and Houston, but everybody in your division is yep. pretty quick. So I'm looking at one at Atlanta. At New Orleans, that's already games two and three. Oh, that's a, you walk that. That's nothing. That's back light to back work. on the Cavs, Jacob tells me. Charlotte in uh, at home against Charlotte, and then at Boston, November twelfth and thirteenth. Mm, that's not nothing. That's not nothing. Away at the Wizards, away at Charlotte, the seventeenth and eighteenth. A couple of dubs right there. Wow, wait a minute. So that's that's the 12th and 13th Charlotte Boston and then the, they have a day off and then they do another back to back so travel. four and five nights oh my god there's going to be a lot of load management i mean the yeah, kids might it. take a night oh, off jacob is yeah, just, no. jacob is just giving me <laughs> brilliant brilliant notes in my ear that's part of the and the very important always exciting some of those games by the way nba play in oh boy oh, oh, that I, is going to be that's something you kidding we, me come on throw out the records Come on. Phoenix, L.A., back-to-back in Phoenix in L.A. on the 15th and 16th of That's, December. Yeah. 10 and 10.30 starts. Pretty good teams. That's not around the corner. Orlando, Indiana, December or- 29th and 30th. Orlando, Indiana. Uh, again, you throw out the record books when these two get together. Philly, Washington isn't so bad in January. But a lot of these, you know, those are, those are as Peter said, they're dubs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they, they, yeah they, I feel good about these if you're a Knicks fan. So that's pretty cool. It's nice to see that these schedules out. I'm excited, of course, for the hockey season. Schedule was out a little earlier, like months month. ago. Oh yeah. Still waiting on my Ranger schedule. I can't wait for that. Well, listen, that you're gonna you're gonna be waiting a while. Come on. What are we talking about? Uh, I, I want to bring up something with you guys. So we always right. get. I don't know if you guys know this. We get a lot of Yankee calls on this show. I, you know, I've noticed that over the years. And 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 we hear a lot about the analytics. Well. Yesterday, Ben Ruda made news because he was in Foul Territory's chat. I guess they have a chat along with their YouTube show Mm. or the show that they do. And he was talking about the Yankees and their analytics, and it got a lot of notoriety. And I thought to myself, I remember sitting in my car about a month ago. Sure. Hearing Anita Marks have Ben Ruda on. There you go. And talk about all this stuff. So I went back and took a look. And on... The 15th of July, Anita had Ben Ruda on one of her shows on Saturday or Sunday morning. Do you know the significance of July 15th? What is that? My brother's birthday. Oh, my gosh. And the birth of the K-Show. 
Oh, my. Wow. I should know that date by heart. Coinky dink? I think not. Uh, wow. I think not. Good stuff happens on that day. Um, let's hear. To, now, Ben was in the Yankee farm system I'm sure. back in 2017, 2018. Here's what he had to say about the main analytic that the Yankees look at and what it rewards and what it doesn't reward. The main analytic the Yankees use is this thing called hit effect OPS. So what that does is it takes out the defense and it takes all your launch angles, it takes all your exit velos, and it gives you a projected OPS on that ball in play, which in theory sounds good because it takes away bad luck. So if you line out and the guy catches it, it's no longer an out. In this sense, it's a line drive, which is kind of like what you're, you're looking for. So if you get robbed, you get rewarded in theory but what it doesn't take into account is strikeouts so if you're a guy that puts the ball in play a lot and say you put it in play softly instead of striking out and you get a hit you actually get penalized so to get a higher hit effect OPS you're better off striking out than hitting a weak single with two strikes which to me makes no sense that makes no sense he's absolutely right not doesn't make no sense it makes no sense Sorry. Now, we need to hear from somebody else. What do you mean? I'm hoping you have this sound. Okay. Now, if you're a Christian, excuse me, who do you believe in more than anybody? Jesus. Jesus. That's right. Yeah. If yeah. you're a Yankee fan, who is your Jesus? Begins with the same letter. G or Jesus? Uh, your, well, Jeter. That's right. The Jesus he said today? What did no, he say? You don't have that sound? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, How about that? Oh, yeah, no, and, and Anthony knows everything, so are you, That's oh, not true at all. No. Is that well, tell true? Us, just tell us. Don't don't rub don't rub dirt in his eye. Well, tell I us. wanna be able I honestly I wouldn't be able to do it justice. Okay. You you, you don't paraphrase a parable, do you? You don't. So That's you don't paraphrase the, the, the Jeter. <laughs> you don't paraphrase the Jesus. You don't paraphrase Jeter. So I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull a Peter. Okay. And I am going to, I'm going to see if I can pull it up here on the computer and put the microphone to it. Interesting. That's the level of importance. Really? And, this and you very have it. important. Because I have no idea. I, I still honestly have no idea what you're talking about. Apparently, yeah, was, I, can... I just saw he, he was interviewed somewhere, and I'm going to get the video. And I'm going to play it for you on the microphone as soon as I find it. Okay. All right. All right. Well, now, now no, you I got it, baby. It, I got it. You found it already? I got it. Let's see if we can turn this make up. Sure there's no, make, make this Anthony, work. what are the odds that when he tries to hit play, there's like an advertisement that plays for That'd be oh, great. Let's do it. You ready? Here we go. Here. Analytics. Uh, you know, it's all, you know, analytics have taken over the game. I, I always think anytime you make a decision, you want to have as much information as you possibly can, right? All right. If you, if you say no to that, then you're not doing your job. But I also think you can't measure everything. Uh, you know, Mr. Torrey, Joe Torrey, Joe Torrey, used to always say you can't, you can't measure a person's heartbeat. That's People right. have heartbeats. Right? Right. You can't necessarily just take a player from Milwaukee and plug him into New York and think the same thing's going to happen. There's more pressures, you know. Oh, right. You have to get to know people. And... Um, so analytics can't measure everything, and I think the game has gotten very, very analytical. There you go. Okay. Well, that the reason Anthony wouldn't have heard about it today is, is it's from November. No, but I found it today. <laughs> <laughs> that was from Drink Champs. By the way, I can't believe D Jeter did, dr all due respect to Nori and EFN, who do a great job. I can't believe Jeter did Drink Champs, and we haven't had him in here yet. Well, look, I mean... Uh, he's, uh, he's on the verge of showing up to a grand union. And look, there's a lot of people that especially old school baseball players that feel like the analytics are a little too much. Um, didn't Bo Bichette kind of say something similar when he was on with K-Rod the other week where he said, like, it's great to have all the information, but sometimes players don't want to hear about all the things they're bad at. Sometimes maybe just show us all the things we're good at. Okay, and, but... and this is clearly the Yankees are telling their minor leaguers, don't worry about strikeouts. Just worry about hitting the ball hard. Yeah. And I know we, we sound like old men when we say, well, but back when I played, mm -hmm. the idea is what would, was to put the ball in play because things can happen. There could be a, a, what, what could be wrong with putting the ball in play? But they look at, oh, well, you can into a double play. But what, 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 what could comes from striking out? And now, what was the other I conversation? It. It's like about it. what numbers you take. And, and, and what Ruta was saying is that they, they've selected this like one that, specific right. analytic as the end-all, be-all on who they draft and who they acquire. 
Like I said, I go back to when we had uh, Aaron Boone on last year about IKF, and we talked about how the, the organization thinks he's a great defensive shortstop. And we said, well, the numbers that we have seen says he's not. But there are three numbers that the Yankees looked at where he was top, I think, top five and then top ten in some defensive metrics. So it's really all that all the stuff you're looking at. Now, that OPS number that Ben Root is mentioning, are the Astros putting as much emphasis on that? Are the Dodgers putting as much emphasis on that number? I don't think they strike out as much as the Yankees do. So they're probably not. They're probably looking at a different analytic. Analytics aren't necessarily bad, guys. And everybody that's calling in, it's the way that the Yankees seemingly, or what they're putting their emphasis on, that's leading to the problems that they have. Well, like Jeter said, you know, you want to make every decision based on information, but you don't make it your God. You don't make it your religion where you just have to follow it blindly and have good, experienced people who have been around the block, you know, have the final say. I, 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 I just hate that we've taken everything that we've known about baseball and just thrown it away as it's complete garbage. They had no idea what this is the way to do it. Well, if everybody does it, well, not everybody can win. So somebody's got to think outside the box. Somebody's got to find the right button to push. And to Peter's point yesterday, it's been a while now since they've been able to do that. At least to their own satisfaction. Because have they won, Peter? No. No, they haven't. And when I heard the Ruta quotes from yesterday about the games they play, like the little fun games they play that only reward... What was it? Rewards walks. Oh, and and and, and exit velo over ninety five miles an hour. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they said like a line drive that gets caught, a really hard hitting line drive. You as get long as it's ninety six, you're good. The so only problem you... was somebody caught it. Okay, well that's a pretty big problem, isn't it? So do you want to live in a world, Peter? In a world, yeah. right? Where yeah, you know what? We don't need a Tony Gwynn. We don't need a Wade Boggs. We don't need a Rod Carew. Guys that just made contact, got hits, consistently hit over 300, on base constantly. No, no, no. We got to change. They got to have launch angle. They got to hit the ball harder. They got to hit the ball out of the park. So, all of these great players, completely obsolete. And the guys we laughed at, the Rob Deers and the Dave Kingmans back in the day, that's what we want. <laughs> so, that, that's what they're saying is, is that everything you, you knew about baseball, everything you thought was good was actually bad, and everything you thought was bad is actually good. I want to punch these people right in the eyeball. <laughs> now, that would be something, wouldn't it? I want to buy crack. No, I, I, yeah. I really hate them because they're just telling you that you're garbage, you're an old man, get out of my way. We, we now have figured baseball out. Uh, well, not so much. But if you guys are interested, um, anybody listening that wants to hear more from Ben, um, our Twitter account, the 98.7 Twitter account, uh, X account, I should say, uh, posted the interview back from July 15th. I think Anita Good. has now retweeted it as well. Um, yeah, we promote Anita here. We promote our own here. Really, Good job out of her. Really interesting, really interesting stuff um, that she got out of, out of Ben. Hey, Dalvin Cook was introduced today. You guys want to hear from him? On the Jets? Oh, that's right. Wow. Now, there's a 22-second cut here of why he signed with the Jets. How long does it take him to say Aaron Rodgers? You know, when I came on my visit, I think I pretty much seen everything I needed to see. Uh, you know, it was a good vibe with the coaches, the players, you know, everybody around the building. And, you know, obviously when you dig deep and look into the roster, I think all the pieces are put together. I think I can come help these guys. And you look at the running back room with MC, Brees, Bam, and all those guys with me just adding to it, I think it could be something special. There you go. How about none? Didn't mention Rodgers. Wow, I like them apples. Don't worry. don't worry, don't 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 worry, don't worry. Here's Dalvin Cook on playing with Aaron Rodgers. Being on the other side of that for the last six years, you know, I couldn't be on the other side no more. So it was just like being, a, I got the chance to go join him and you know, you know, help him win, win again. You know, that was that was a big thing to come come over here. He isn't. He isn't. <laughs> being on the other side of that for the last six years, you know. I'll hear it twice. I like it. No, I, I'm good. Well, it's actually kind of interesting because we we worried, oh, he's going to go to Miami. We forgot about the fact that he did play against Rodgers in Minnesota. And does he really want to go to a team again where he has to worry about Aaron Rodgers? Now, this is going to feel much better. Like this much, is, much better. And, and, and uh, Barton Hahn were talking about this. Probably up there with, I think, the Niners and the Packers as the best running back room 
or duo, let's mm-hmm. say, if we're going to go with Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook in the league? Drew. Now, can we spin it this way, though? Like, we all thought that he, he was using the Jets to get more out of the Dolphins. I think the opposite happened. Because if you look at it, the Dolphins didn't seem to be interested in the running back. They allowed the two best available running backs to go into their own division. Right? They, they didn't sign Elliott. Yeah. They didn't sign Cook. So I'm not sure the Dolphins, Gordon brought this up uh, earlier this week because he's, he's a Dolphin fan. They don't value the running back. They, they, don't, they didn't draft a running back when they had a chance. They haven't been on a free agent running back this year. So it probably was the opposite. He went to Miami hoping to drive the price up for the Jets. And he ended up being, what, seven with eight plus in incentives or seven with they could get to eight with incentives. So maybe he doesn't get that if he doesn't threaten to go to Miami. But it doesn't sound like the Dolphins were interested in either Elliott or Cook. One more story, guys, before we get out of here. Uh, Jonathan Taze took to Instagram to thank Blackhawks fans for his time in Chicago. And while he's not retiring, he is taking some time off from hockey. If the Bedard era wasn't already official, it certainly is now. No Kane, no Taze in Chicago. A much different team this year. That's going to do it for ENN. Oh, uh, come on now. Thursday. Well, that's, that's lame. That's a bad job out of Anthony. What did I do? Hey, I don't want to stop. You, you know, oh. you could have given, given uh, time to comment off of that. My triple G breasts are too big. And we use that extra time to our advantage. Exactly. Taves had long COVID last year, Peter. That's why he missed a lot of time. And he did uh, come back, I think, briefly at the end of the season. But uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see if anybody takes a chance on him. But I think he has recovered. <laughs> and that'll do it for Anna. Now, there Don, you go. Now, Don, Peter and I want to hear about pain. Can you tell us oh, about it, please? Please do tell me. And also, by the way, not only do you tell me about pain, I want the listeners to tell us what they're thinking at 1-800-919-3776 mm-hmm. as we open the line to the last call crew. Now, That's Don, right. pain, go. Now, summer is here and you want to feel your best. Don't let neck, back, joint. Beautiful ladies loving it. Beautiful family. Jealous. Bright is the best day of your life. There's that smile. That's a keeper. Let's get the lucky men in here, huh? Oh. Ah, we got it. Groom's bed. Okay. Some days are just too important for a trashy suit. Rent from the blacktux.com. I'm cooking without a recipe. I now have a signature cocktail. It's not a drink. It's an adventure. I'm giving a charming impromptu toast. I'm discussing astrophysics in a casual conversation. What? Surprise. Blame it on Masterclass. Learn from the best to become your best with thousands of online lessons. Now just $10 a month. All right, here we go. It's a big responsibility to be a designer. Dagny Dover is a bag brand based in New York City, founded by three women. We make hyper-functional, performance-driven bags. That's like a mouthful. We're all about getting the most out of life. When you're organized and you have your things together, you feel good. And when you feel good, you can live life intentionally. Oh, (laughs) it's pronounced Dagny Dover. Dagny means new dawn. It's a new dawn for fashion. I have lucid dreams almost every night. I keep thinking I have some kind of double life. Years ago, I came up with the design for a beautiful flowy dress with a pattern made from real flowers. During hard times, I go into survival mode and I have bright dreams every night. Every night, I close my eyes and I find myself inside my brain. I travel through memories and time. I just want to keep dreaming forever. Everything you love from ShopRite is now in your phone on Instacart. Get free free delivery on your first order. Jeff has a problem. It started when he ordered his Brunt work boots. He's beating them up 14 hours a day, going on about how they're comfortable as sneakers. But he never takes them off. At my place, with his buddies, at night. 
I caught him in the shower and he just goes, what? They're waterproof. I don't know if we're going to make it through the 30 day risk free trial. Of course they will, babe. They're super durable. I'm not talking about the boots, Jeff. Bruh, the tools you wear. Try us on the job for 30 days risk free. Trying on glasses using Warby Parker's virtual try on is so lifelike, so realistic, that you might not even be able to tell what's real from what's virtual. Yep, it's that good. Virtually try on hundreds of styles in the Warby Parker app. Into those cravings, get that baconator. Give me one hug if you want a baconator. Let me get that beep beep for six strips of bacon. Oh, there it is. When I say bacon, you say ain't a bacon. Woo! Let me get a toot on the mega. All right. Uh, okay. Now, we're not so Dude. Sorry. When the craving strikes, go night mode and choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Baconator. Salon Pass Lidocaine Flex, a super thin, flexible patch with maximum OTC strength lidocaine that contours to the body to relieve pain right where it hurts. And did we mention it really, really sticks? Salon Pass, it's good medicine. Next. Next. Stop. We got it? No. Keep going. Again. Next. If you don't pick one, I... Am I keeping you from your job? Next. Stop. Do we finally have it? Let's go back to the beginning. Are you... Your electric future customized. The fully electric oh. Audi Q4 e-tron. Get exceptional offers at your local Audi dealer. Sherwin-Williams and save big during the four-day super sale. Get 40% off paints and stains with sale prices starting at $26.69. Hurry, it's only August 18th through the 21st. Shop online or at your neighborhood Sherwin-Williams store. There are times in every season where the games matter more. I want to win. That's why I'm here. And there's a clear line of sight. We still got a job to do. We're taking it one day at a time. To fulfill your destiny. A lot of ball games left. We got a lot of work to do, so we got to pick it up. I wouldn't count us out. What is your healing power? Helping veterans with PTSD, traumatic brain injuries, depression, anxiety, or loneliness? Is your healing power a simple, heartfelt letter or being a volunteer? At HealVets.org, you can find out more about the healing power of pen pals, volunteers, and therapy kits. Help Heal Veterans, together with you, has been helping veterans heal. What is your healing power? Find out at HealVets.org. Ty Butler, a.k.a. Ty Boo. <laughs> I don't know why they found that funny. Very good beard. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, who has the best one? You got Michael's doesn't really work. My cat doesn't really work. P. Rowe isn't really funny. Dola. That's okay. That's not bad. Day Rowe for Dave Rothenberg. I don't hate it. Uh, Reedy for Rick DiPietro doesn't really work. No. Um, so you got Lago, you got Goda, yeah, Alan Hahn, you got Aha. <laughs> Take on and, uh, Bosk for, for that doesn't really work for Bart. Um, I like I like Taibu. I like Taibu a lot. <laughs> Taibu's good. Taibu and Lago, and then when you put Larry and Gordon together, they become Lago. Of course, I'm a big fan of that as well. All right, let's get to these phone calls. So many people to talk to. We will start with uh, who's been on hold the longest, and that would be Richie in the Hudson Valley. Hey, Richie. Oh no! Oh, Turn down your radio, Richie. No. No, oh, he's gone. Wow, good for you. All right, uh, the person on hold the next longest would be Peter in New Jersey. Hey, Peter. Hey, guys, thanks for taking my call. I just got some uh, Colombian dessert. I'm going to my parents' house to go enjoy right now. But I have two uh, comments Beautiful. about uh, the movies you were talking with Robert De Niro, Don. Uh, yeah. One of my favorites was uh, Casino. Her, him and her, uh, Sharon Stone, uh, they had some great, great episodes. I, I, and, uh, I, I adore Casino, but continue on. Uh, it is very good. The classic, classic, classic. And one more point about the Jets. They need to score in the red zone. I think if they're going to be competitive this year, I have to see them score touchdowns. No field goals. Give me some touchdowns. Get some points. And get ahead. I think it's going to be a fun year. Talk soon, guys. Be well. Well, they got options. When you have options, you should do well in the red zone. Are they going to run the ball with their backs? You know, they've got tight ends. They've got wide receivers. They've got a 
still mobile Rodgers. I wouldn't say he's, you know, Randall Cunningham in his prime, but he's not stationary. They should do, they should do well in the red zone. Let's go to Mark in Deer Park. Hey, what's up, guys? Can you can you hear me? Oh, sure. Oh, what's going on? First time, long time. I'm a little nervous, so you got to deal with me. Well, oh. I got I got three questions, and all of them will be worth using a whole <laughs> show on. The first one is a football question, right? Okay. Would you all rather right. root for a team that wins once a decade, like the Giants, except the '70s? Or the Cowboys, who always win but never seem to win a Super Bowl since 1995. I'm taking the championships. I mean, I, I lived through it with the Giants, and it was tough. Although, Peter kind of undersold it a little bit. They went to the playoffs every year between 06 and 08, and then won the Super Bowl in between. Uh, but but still, after that... Um, it was after the, after the, the first, first ring, Super though. Bowl, it was, it was, you know, 09. Oh, dry. It, it, right. it was a drop. But, it, listen, it's about... You want to get that ring, and I'm sure it drives Cowboy fans crazy they don't have that ring. So, yes, they're good every year, but ask Yankee fans if that satisfies them. What about you, Peter? Yeah, we don't care about the Cowgirls over here. <sighs> Um, if it was up to me, and we'll keep Mark. Hold on, we'll get to your next one. If it was up to me, um, I, I'd rather. I, I just want the championships whenever they come. So, you know, give give me give me the titles. I, I think the Giants situation. The Giants are at three. How many of the Cowboys at total? Five. The Giants are at four Super Bowls. Our Cowboys. Oh, Giants, Giants have four. No, four, four I think five Super Bowl appearances. Dallas might have five. And, well, and the Giants, the four have all come in our in my lifetime. You know what I mean? Well, see, Dallas. Like, see, not Dallas, even just Don's Dallas, lifetime. Really quickly, they beat the Bills twice. They beat the Steelers. That for, that finally beat the Steelers, the Neil O'Donnell Steelers. Yeah, and then they beat the – Yeah, three in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, five. It's five total. All right, next question, Mark. Mm -hmm. Tons of appearances. Uh, your all, your all-street clothes team in the NBA. I got Anthony Davis at the five because I got to bring him down to the five. All street clothes. I got Zion Williamson at the four. Okay. Then I'm going to go with Kawhi Leonard at the three. I'm having trouble with my two. But at my one, I'm going to go with Kyrie Irving. It's the all street um, clothes team. Maybe y'all can help me with that. I don't know who's my two. Can we play Can we play Grant Hill at the two? No, it's Terrence. Oh, oh, right Current. now, all street, street clothes. clothes. Oh, sorry, sorry. Current street clothes team. He was a three oh. anyway, I think. I mean, but you could still run him in a two. He'd be just fine. Um, yeah. It's a good question who that last one would be. Uh, those are tough. Oh, oh, um, well, I was going to say, I mean, listen, he, he's a one, but you already got Kyrie. Why not have the threat? Just put Ja Moran at the two. You know what I mean? Wow. Or move Kyrie to two and let Ja play the one. You could all street closed to, right? Now, you, what about Paul George, the number of games he's played ah. the last few years? Let's let's throw Paul George in at the two. Ooh. You got options here. Let's go to uh, John in Old Bridge. Hey, guys. Uh, I came up with penalties for all of you. Interesting. And um, they're, not, they're a little harsh, but they're doable. You don't have to wait for the uh, summer show. Uh, let's start with Michael since he isn't there. Uh, for two weeks, Michael would have to every day on yes try either a food or drink he never had before. Okay. I like that. Peter, Peter, for two okay. weeks, you would have to wear a red MAGA hat. Well, this, let's get to, let's play realistic. That wouldn't play for a lot of, that wouldn't play for a lot of reasons. It's a penalty. It is. I know, but I, mean, that's I don't think the powers you know that be. Leaning. Yeah, you don't know how I feel, <laughs> but, but, but I don't think the powers that be would be into that as a, as a, as a thing. A payoff. All right, then you'd have to shave your uh, your beard off for for two weeks. Then. Now, now that I I will tell you that would be hard. I I do think I would look, I would hate myself currently with a shaved face, or I could go okay, completely then, shave shave face and head Don. I could go like full Casper. You know what? I like that a lot. And you full can do it right Casper on the air. for me. Oh, that would be yeah, awkward. perfect. Perfect. All right, there you go. Now, Don, 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 Don. I'm a John, I'm a Rangers fan since 1978. Okay. And since you're basically the voice of the Rangers, you simply cannot continue with a devil's tattoo. You would have to either remove it or alter it. Again, I'm not mad at any of these, honestly. I mean, is there a way? Because I, I was thinking if I was going to alter 
the tattoo. And for people who don't know, it's, when I say Devil's Tattoo, it's a Stanley Cup with the Devil logo in the cup. And then 90, the 1995-2000, I never put the 2003 under the cup. So I think you probably remove the years. Is there a way to just make it the Stanley Cup? I'd have no problem with the Stanley Cup on my on my cap. Well, but by the way, this okay. isn't this isn't really punishment. I would agree to that. Well, because it would hurt like hell. I'm sure it would hurt. Right, but at this point, you kind of should have it removed. I mean, it's it's kind of fugazi at this point. Not fugazi, but it's not true of who you are anymore. No, but but it but it also honors who I was. It's almost like a, you know, like when you go into those old caves. What do they call that? When do you, the writing spelunking? You want to go spelunking? <laughs> and you guys, you guys could pick the food and drink for Michael that he would have to try. Now that would be, of course, a time. Wow, see, I love when Michael we're talking. I, let's, uh, these are back to back good calls, by the way. I like Thank a couple of weeks ago. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate you, John. When I like when Michael goes. Uh, this is the perfect time to be t tasting food. I, I have no taste. This is when I should be trying food. I was like, you, I, I think you fundamentally miss the point of enjoying food. Right. That's what's so troubling about it. Let's go to uh, Santiago in Westchester. Hey, Santiago. What's up, Donnie and Petey, baby? You good? How you doing? Good, what's up, baby? You good? Um, I need y'all to, this is mostly for Pedro, but Don, you can give me your two cents. Do you guys agree that the New York Knicks need Evan Fournier to ball out at the FIBA World Cup so that the Knicks can trade him for a bag of basketballs and a Gatorade package? That right? would be nice. That would be nice. Is he going to expiring contract? Peter? No, right? No. Here's another year. So, they, yeah, he's, he's, he's unattractive to trade. Oh. And, and, and he's already playing. basically said he wants out and that this is a disaster. Would that be enough, Peter, if you're a general manager? If you were a bag of basketballs? Out? Yeah. No, no, if you were to ball out internationally. I don't know. Don't, don't, don't they FIBA. know? Don't they know who they he is? They know. Uh, I mean, oh, sorry, Rocky. Or they, 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 they already know who this guy is. So I don't I don't know how much that matters. Let's go to Linda in New Jersey. Hey, Linda. Hi, how are you doing? First time caller, long time Welcome. listener. Nice. I'm calling to say that maybe the Yankees are playing too much, too many games in a shorter time, and not enough practice, and they're not bringing other people up from the Double A division. Now, if they would get more practice, they would get back in the spring. Um, you know, in their routine. Because watching them, like <clears throat> my friends say, well, it's almost painful to watch them trying to hit. Either they need to have an eye exam or more practice or something to get back in the spring. Because just like any sport, like I play the tennis, okay, I know if I'm not practicing enough, what I can expect, what can I just swing, and when I can say, well, you know, you got to get back to basics. So with any sport, you have to have the practice, and maybe it's they're not getting enough practice. But, but what do when, you think? when are you going to practice? You get 18 days off during the course of the year. There's That's no, it? there's no practice. Well, how are you going to practice, <laughs> Linda? Linda, I appreciate yeah. the thought. Thank you for the call. But the truth of the matter is, even when you get to the high school level, and you start playing two or three games a week, practice basically becomes a rumor. Like, you, you do batting practice every day, and you have your, you know, field warm-ups, et cetera. But once games start, you would agree, Don, at basically every level, once games start, you, you play so much baseball, you, you don't, you're in practice. You, you should have these fundamentals down. They're not eight-year-olds. They don't need to be in the backyard shooting free throws. All they can do is go into the cage and work but you just heard from from the ruta comments it's all going to be launch angle like i think a lot of them look at all the strikeouts and go oh my god well they gotta they gotta practice more no it's it's all by design uh, they're not hitting but i but you look at the lineup i'm going to sound like michael but you look at the lineup who's who's underachieving anymore now rizzo's out of the lineup i mean Calabre torres kind of is what he is i think lemayhu is what he is at this point of his career you know, so Stanton. I mean, I, 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 is it lack of practice? If anything, they should they should ice him down. <laughs> right? I mean, he, the, he should go into hibernation. He needs a break. He needs a rest. Apparently, I can't run anymore. You want to uh, take some calls on the other side, Don? No, we got one me. more. No, no, we're well, going to take one no. more. Yeah, we'll take one more. Let's go to Jack in Howell. Hey, Jack, how you doing? Hey guys, how are you tonight? What's up? 
Okay, before I get to my point, Don, you claim to be a straight out guy, not hiding anything. Um, how come you never address why you guys suck so much in the ratings? Hmm. I don't know. Well, what, how do I, why would why is that a topic of conversation? Like, who would care? Like, let, let's open the show with why we've dropped in the ratings. Oh, that would be fun to talk about, wouldn't it? What? Oh, or, or how about we talk about the fact that uh, that we're killing it on yes? How about the fact that I continue to get contracts and they can't get rid of me? So, oh, how about we talk about the fact that you don't have a job probably and you live with your mom? Are those things that are worth even talking about? I wish right. you didn't disconnect them. I wanted to engage. I know. I wouldn't want to. You know, I think Don, you're open. Himself. Why don't you talk? I don't know. Uh, why Why have we dropped in the ratings? I don't know. Do you know how the ratings work? You know, you uh, well, somebody went on vacation. There's eight people with meters. I, I, it's not television, yo-yo. People yeah, are very got, happy. I just had a talk with an executive. He couldn't he wax more poetic about how, what a great job we're doing. So, he, the guy, Eric, the, the, by the way, the guy hung up. He hung up, by the way. He didn't. He was, oh, he was so he's gutless. He's also gutless. Oh, I'd rather talk about what a gutless puke you are that will never accomplish anything in life. I think that's a fun thing to talk about. When uh, we come how about back, this? let's talk about how Eric will never accomplish anything. And then when he finally does pass away, his last words will be, remember that phone call when I got Don on why he didn't talk about how the ratings dropped? <laughs> but the thing is, nobody will be around his bed because he never got married, never had children. All he had was a collection of debt. <laughs> this is very disconcerting. And but, I but, that was, but that's fun to talk about, right? I mean, oh, I just don't show like that. Eric, um, what might have been. I have a lot of thoughts, but God's I also... God's mistake, Eric. I also want to take... Oh, by the way, call back. We'll let right. you back through. I mean, well, no, I'm sorry. Every line's jammed again. You can't get through. Yeah, right. Because You've been trying for six months. You can't get through. But again, that's no the one problem hears. is that the people are too busy calling and not listening. Um, when we get on the other side, by the way... A matchup on TV that a lot of people have been hoping they would get. Don won't care at all, no. but some listeners may. We'll close out with your calls and that next, right here on Yes and Yes People. Yes, Yes Social media for being a little more social. Connecting with new friends. Game day, just an Amtrak away. from ShopRite is now in your phone on Instacart. Get free free delivery on your first order. See everything your restaurant can do with tools from Square. Get a POS that connects to a KDS so you can handle orders ASAP. Reach more customers with online ordering and QR codes. Use pocket-sized hardware so you can turn tables faster. And get one account for everything so you can take care of it all and take it easy, too. Get your all-in-one restaurant system and sign up at square.com today. Friends have been telling friends about Colonial Pen Guaranteed Acceptance Whole Life Insurance for more than 50 years, and with good reason. If you're between the age of 50 and 85, it's a sure thing. Your acceptance is guaranteed because full benefits are not paid in the first two years. And the price? Options start at $9.95 a month, less than 35 cents a day. With Colonial Pen, your rate is another sure thing. It will never increase. And you should know, this coverage can last a lifetime. Call today, 1-800-290-3100. All right, here we go. It's a big responsibility to be a designer. Dagny Dover is a bag brand based in New York City founded by three women. 
We make hyper-functional, performance-driven bags. That's like a mouthful. We're all about getting the most out of life. When you're organized and you have your things together, you feel good. And when you feel good, you can live life intentionally. Oh, <laughs> it's pronounced D Dagny Dover. Dagny means new dawn. It's a new dawn for fashion. Or app to get real-time help from a video expert for his home repair and maintenance needs. Let's go. So all that's left to do is be done. Introducing Front Door, an all-new home repair and maintenance app. Download today. What does the future of strength look like? It's a personal trainer that assesses your strength and adds weight as you progress. It's dynamic weight that adjusts for you in real time for a more efficient workout. Come on. And it's a roster of coaches that motivates you to get stronger faster the future is strength you can feel and results you can see and you can only experience it on tonal what can you get for 10 cents how about a pocket full of cash to spend on a tropical vacation sports bar you name it because with jackpots on DraftKings casino you could turn 10 cents into tens of thousands even over a million on roulette slots blackjack baccarat and more Jackpot winnings are at 10 million and counting this year, and the next can hit any second. So score the latest Jackpots offer when you get the number one most downloaded online casino app. DraftKings Casino, go where the Jackpots grow. Hurry in to the Acura Summer of Performance event going on now. Get your heart pumping with Well Life NYC on the Yes app. Take a tour of the hottest gyms. I'm excited to have you here. I'd love to have fun all of that. And the coolest places to chill around New York. First, I'm going to be freezing you at negative 200 degrees. This feels so good. Let's see what happens. Catch an all-new season of Well Life NYC, streaming now exclusively on the Yes app. Defend your family's health and remove the risk. Go to fda.gov slash health playbook. Hard Knocks is now streaming on Match. New episodes every Tuesday. Tuesday. Now, the matchup I uh, was alluding to, uh, the internet is happy. Apparently, Stephen A. will be squaring off against Shannon Sharp twice a week on first take. Yay! I'm now, we know Don doesn't care about things of this nature. Oh, I'm a Stephen A. guy, but... Have you ever watched Shannon and Skip? Never. I would never watch it under any circumstances. Because you're a company guy. doing trash. Oh, yeah, and you hate, you hate the no, filth they, that they, is. Listen, they, ESPN could hire Skip back. I wouldn't watch. You still wouldn't watch. You hate him. I mean, they could, they could use the studio, my home studio, to do it. And I'd go upstairs. Yeah, I'm not a Skip guy as well. But I do think the Internet, this will create certainly a, a lot Shannon's of memes. a good guy. I'm a, he's always very nice to my brother. My brother's a big fan. Uh, oh, because they used to work together at Sirius, right? Yeah. But I'm good. I, I have my own debate show. It's called I'll, debate tell you, show. I'll tell you what, Shannon was a... Shannon Sharp doesn't get enough credit for being the beginning of the tight end that we have today. I mean, I know he's a Hall of Famer, and, and people who know, know. But if you didn't live through it and don't remember it, man, that guy was a problem. That guy was a matchup. Well, he was the first... He was one, probably him and... Um, no, it was probably him. Well, is it that... His brother was a wide receiver. Because Sterling was a wide receiver. Right. And, when, and when you have this conversation, Shannon was just like a bigger version of his brother. So when you have these conversations like we're having today about Waller's going to be your number one guy, to me, that kind of conversation about a tight end begins with right. Shannon Sharp. Because they, they started to become wide receivers. Like, they, they started to put up wide receiver numbers. They started to look like wide receivers. But, like, when, when I was growing up, it was, you know, Russ Francis, it was, you know, Mark Bavaro, if you want to go back to, to Ditka. You know, and then, then they started morphing into, you know, Antonio Gates. But they always were, like, bigger and thicker and 
But and then Shannon was too. But th then they started putting up wide receiver numbers. It, it, it's kind of crazy how the tight end Shannon, position is really. Shannon going. put up a thousand yards three times and and nine hundred ninety five once as well. Had two ten touchdown seasons. Just a stud in Denver and Baltimore over thirteen years. But anyways, yeah, you'll get him twice a week now. Apparently with uh, Stephen A. Let's go to Greg and Brick. Hey, Greg. Hey guys, love the show. Uh, two little quick points. Uh, if you, if the season for the Yankees ended today and you guys were in charge, what would you do? And also, there is a little buzz going around the NFL that a particular team might change their name. Peter, what do you think about that? Uh, I'll answer the, the Commanders. I'll answer the Kami question. Um, I, I, I listen. It's not going to happen now. Right. I mean, the season's a few weeks away, so I guess it's a conversation you'd have for next year. I don't know. I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. You better really have – there are two options. You go back to Washington football team, or you come up with something spectacular. Because otherwise, Don, the idea – like, yes, is, is Commanders great? No. But it's fine. And in all likelihood, whatever they pick is going to be fine. So if, to me, if you're going to have your fourth name in five years, yeah. it better be something that just knocks people's socks off or back to Washington football team. Besides that, I don't have much appetite for it. Yeah, that's the problem. I'm not a Commanders fan. I don't like the name. But, yeah, how many different names are you going to have? And it just becomes a joke, right? Well, and like how much, and, and is it that bad? I mean, at the, at the very least, it's kind of, I feel like the worst thing you could say about the commanders is it's kind of generic. You know, it's a kind of a generic, but you know what? Listen, it's hey. sort of a play on the senators and the capitals, commander in chief, president, Washington. I, I get it. It's fine. But, I, what they need to do, Don, whether they go to a, they need to get rid of the W. The, the current military looking W they have does not do it. The, I, I love the idea of them going to an R name team, and then they could use that old curse of R again as the logo. I think that would be cool. Well, Greg just sent me they, they, they're signing petitions, you know, 100,000 signatures to go back to Redskins. It seems like that's something that I, I, I don't know how you could possibly do that. They, 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 by the way, they should sign, they should get a million signatures. It's never going to happen. But they're also finding, like, Native Americans. That's oh, yeah, they find the, they find the, uh, the group Native Americans who hate Native Americans who say we only want the name to be the Redskins. I, I, give me a break. Well, I, I kind of want you, if, if you go with an R, or can you we talked about this before. Can you go to skins? But is that I, I, then change the logo? Can you people do that? like people like red tails? People like uh, something related to hogs. Um, you know, I don't know. The red tails. Now you can go back to the old logo with the R and the feather. Why well, can you go feather? Why can you go? You can't go feather. Well, if it's red tails, right? Yeah, but that wasn't Red Tails. It was the name of like a a, a a military group, an air force group. Right, but was it named after the bird? Because that's how apparently the Blackhawks get away with it. Because that's what they were named after the military uh, uh. outfit that they were on. But still, you look at the logo. That's not where it came from. I mean, that might that might be where the the name their name came from. But the military got it from. <laughs> From the Native Americans, like I, I, I don't know. It's, well, it's not going to happen. Let, let's 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 go to. We never get boxing calls. Let's go to Jonathan in L.A. He wants to talk about the uh, Canelo Charlo fight they had their uh, presser yesterday, I believe. What's up, Jonathan? Hi guys. Hi, Hi guys. Uh, what are the chances of Eric having a Cheeto dust and a keyboard being in front of him? A hundred percent, ninety percent. I mean, I don't want to disrespect Cheetos. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, yeah, um, a question for both of you guys. Um, Don, what do you think about, honestly, me as a Yankee fan, I don't think the Yankees are going to make the playoffs, so I just quit it on them. I might say whatever what he wants about those fans. They quit it. I quit it on them. Hopefully, they proved me wrong. But what are the chances of Jason Dominguez and the few young guys showing up, coming up? And, yeah, uh, what do you think, uh, uh, Peter, what do you think about Canelo, Canelo or Charlo? I'm actually thinking about going to the fight. But what do you think about that? You think Canelo is going to be an easy match for him? 
No, I, I don't. I, thank you, man. I, I'm, I'm thinking about going, too. It's September 30th in Las Vegas, T-Mobile. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in going because I think Jermel Charlo could actually be a legit challenge. This is the most exciting Canelo fight on paper in a long time. Um, so I'm excited to see uh, what happens here. Uh, Charlo's 35-1-1. One one. Canelo's obviously Canelo. No, this is this is a good one. And Dom, we're not seeing Jason Dominguez this year. No, he's not on the forty man roster, and and neither is Floreal. So you got to take a look at the guys that are on the roster. So um, Peraza, you know, um, I'm just taking a look, quick look. Um, you know, there's just not a lot up there that's on the forty man roster that's going to really move the needle at all. Guys, we've had fun today, and guess what? I'm so psyched because tomorrow, Friday show with me and Don. Oh, yeah. We're going to get all into the Jets and Giants uh, games this weekend, Yankees, Red Sox, and more. We'll see you at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Have a great night. I want to buy crack. Shaq, don't do crack.